Skype always. Oh. I think you got I, it that time. time. All right. Yeah. Cool. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. I don't know. How's my audio coming through on your end? Uh, it's coming good. And I just want to make sure the chat can hear it because it's already up. Oh. No. So those guys will they'll tell me if they can hear it. I'm pretty sure they can. So how are you, man? We haven't really ever spoken directly before. Uh, no, I don't think, no, we've, I don't think we've been on stream before. Well, no, we've, we've been on stream before, um, but just like never you and I. It's always been like a group of people. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. I don't think we've ever had a one-on-one -on -one stream before. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, yeah, that, 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 uh, that hasn't happened. I think the last time we were on a stream together was I briefly popped in to that one with King of Pole and Sargon and you. Uh, yeah. your, your chat seems to be saying echo. Am I echoing or are you echoing? No, it might be me that's echoing, and that's just because of my microphone. So um, let me see if I can. I'll turn that down. That should be a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, let's see if there's still an echo or not. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the settings on these things. Oh, Jim is echoing. Oh, I get you. I get you. I see what you're saying, chat. It's a little bit of a, of a little bit of an echo. Is that what you're saying? A little, a little bit of that, that kind of echo. Is that what we're saying? I don't, I don't think it's that. Uh, now, I, okay, now it says that it's. I'm hearing now it's good, but now. All right. It might just be. It might be my system. I'm not too sure. I will. Want to make sure that the. I'm still fucking around with OBS. I'm learning all this stuff as we go through it. That's one of the reasons. Uh, here, let me say something, and then I'll listen to your stream and see if I can hear it on it. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely can hear an echo coming from my end. I wonder what... Huh. It's, it's probably on my end. Good technical skills, man. I'm liking the start to this. We got some echoes well, going you, on. You know, you know, I usually am just do this by myself. Like everything else in life, so <laughs> I should I turn the volume I turn the volume down so that should that should definitely uh, yeah there we go that should probably take care of it. All right yeah let me let me fuck around with some things maybe I can fix it on my end. So uh, crazy shit going on with uh, Google and YouTube yeah. Uh yeah oh yeah man it's it's been it's been nuts and the weird thing too in is that like so the apocalypse like kicked off at the end of March right and and then all through April it went to shit. Uh, like, you know, you know how you made the comment, like I said, I had a hundred thousand views and I made like 15 bucks Yeah, that happened to me in April too. I had, uh, 85,000 views or 80,000 views and I made like $17 and that's just how crazy it got, you know? Uh, but then mid May rolled around and it picked back up. Yeah. It seems pretty hit and mess. I mean, when I was talking to sticks, um, I think it was two days ago, uh, I, I brought up the kind of the, the monetary amounts that have been going on. I mean, I've talked to other people about it too. All right, now, I, I don't do ads on my channel, but I know that a lot of people are really freaking out about it because it's not just that they're getting less than what they usually would get, but it's that they're not getting anything at all now. Like they're having whole swaths of videos just completely demonetized. Yeah, I saw that today. Uh, I saw that with uh, Repsion and a few other people, and I have not actually been impacted with that at all. Uh, it's probably because of the type of content that I cover. Like I, I'm very particular with how I title things and how I tag things in order to get around that. So when people come over and they say, oh, my video is demonetized. And I'm like, yeah, but it's like you have this one says rape in the title. This one says ISIS. This one says Syria. Like we've known for a long time that that is the, uh, you know, that that is going to be a triggering word. So don't fucking do it. Yeah, but what I what I was seeing was, I mean, you had uh, liberal lunacy, you had Mr. Repsion, you had people like Razor Fist, you had a lot of people, and I don't think it's that their titles or their tags are what's doing it. Um, I know Sargon put up a video like three hours ago before his Twitter got, uh, you know, black holed. Yeah. Uh, talking about how people at Google, I, I don't know what article he was citing. I can't remember exactly what it was. It might have been Breitbart. It could have been USA. I have no. Clue. It was uh, it was Breitbart, I believe. Who was talking about an anonymous Google dev that was saying that there was an anti PC mentality there. Uh, you know, I, I'm planning on doing a video of, of all this shit this weekend. I've been going over everything from, you know, all the way back from the ADA initiative uh, through the GNOME outreach program up into what's going on now. But it seems like there's a long fucking history of this shit going on. And I didn't realize it ran as deep as it does at Google yeah. uh, with them being really almost – well, I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's not just malicious. It's petty. Um, it, about it really feels that way. People. Yeah. yeah. 
it's one of those things where like uh what was it the uh james demore was saying to jordan peterson that he went to these like off the books diversity meetings and was talking with them about that and that's one of the things I, i'm i'm going like yeah it doesn't surprise me we've seen this big push with silicon valley with you know people like ellen powell the former chairwoman of reddit you know like claiming that her being outed was sexism and then you know they need to change all this stuff and all like these diversity i mean twitter hired a, a, a diversity vp that lasted like six months you know and it, they, the thing is they they hire these people to come in out of pure desperation and just out of backlash right or a reaction and these people can't get the job done because there's like basically what we saw in that document it's it's nothing that can be fixed by trying to either throw money at a problem or trying to make it all go away no, I, I know, um, you know, the money side is a really big component. I mean, I, I get it. People are freaked out about the monetization and I, we're hearing a lot about that because it's affecting a lot of people, yeah. uh, even, even with stuff like Patreon with Warren Southern and just shit like that going on. Uh, my, my big concern, the thing that freaks me out more than just the money issue is it, it feels like it's transitioning into a phase now where you're going to be it, 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 it's weird. It, it, it almost follows a pattern of, you know, threes like this, this triple approach that they're taking. We're going to de-platform you, we're going to demonetize you, and then we're going to de-person you. So, you know, it's either we're going to get rid of you off the platform entirely, we're going to take away all your funding, or if for some reason you are magically able to dodge around our really convoluted sense of a terms of service agreement, we're going to stick you into a category where nobody can watch or share or listen. And, you know, people with larger channels... And this, I think, played out with Jordan Peterson. I mean, he has a very large channel. He had a lot of reach, and he knows a lot of people. So it's hard for them to fuck with him because he can talk and get the word out. Yeah. My fear is a lot of the shit I really like to watch are small channels. And, it, it, you know, money aside, a lot of the people that put up really creative stuff or have really good argumentation or just put out wild crap, they're going to disappear, and nobody's going to fucking know. I mean, there, I, there's – I don't gonna disagree. Have, yeah, they're going to have no way of getting the word out. They're going to have no way of saying, you know, listen, I'm getting screwed with. Uh, can you do something about it? And the thing that spooked me the most was that that Google post from two years ago about a completely unrelated incident. But the guy basically saying, you know, tech companies talk to one another. If you fuck with us, there are social consequences. You know, yeah. you may piss somebody off at Google who talks to Twitter, who then talks to Facebook. And now you're gone everywhere. And what it makes me interested in is, God, I mean, could you trace that? Could you look back at prior incidents of people having like a YouTube channel shut down and then mysteriously afterwards their Twitter and their Facebook go down? Like I wonder if you can almost pick the pattern of uh, like this interconnected relationships between these different corporations and the people that are doing things. I'm not entirely sure. I mean it would require a lot of investigation. You need to get – I mean really you need to weaponize poll. Uh, to get into this kind of stuff in order to really kind of dig it out. I mean, as much as I disagree with a lot of what poll posts, I would n I never ar claim that they're not good at finding information. And and they're some of the best on the web, especially when they're able to just kind of sit down and, and get into it. Finding these people and, and exposing them for what they're attempting to do is not, I don't think, as hard as it might be because these they're so blatant about it these days and they have been for years they've they never shy away from from trying to beat their chest and act as some kind of fucked up moral authority you know and so we can see them but even though we can see them and we can expose them and you know expose after expose could come on out it never really has as much of an impact as it should and that's just because people i think in silicon valley are too too damn afraid to actually stand up for fighting back against these kind of ideals well, I, I think this is kind of – I don't know how to say it. I mean it feels like it's building up momentum to something larger. It, it feels like right now there are distinct groups on the internet that have always liked to fight with one another and fuck around with one another. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've noticed the skeptics in the alt-right. You guys have been kind of back and forth with one another against each other. I know that um, you know Murdoch Murdoch had his channel and he had like an encounter with Lefty Pole. And it just seems like there's so much uh, – I don't, I don't know how to say it – friendly fire going on right now. That people aren't paying attention to the the Machiavellian uh, entity in the background that basically thinks you're all shit and wants all of you gone, and, and it, it, yeah, it, it's it's just it's it's surreal how there's so you know it reminds me of it reminds me of um, the journalist man from back you know from the Zoe Quinn thing they're they're really arrogant about it which really gets yeah. under my skin. Oh, I remember all that too. Every time, and the thing is, they're still arrogant. You know, we're we're coming up on three years. 
and they're still as arrogant and they're still in the industry. A few of them have changed. A few, a few people have, have, I think, you know, changed their tune a little bit publicly, but probably not privately. But when it, your earlier point though, about how there's a lot of, you know, you could say friendly fire or just maybe infighting to an extent, I kind of chalk that up to the fact that the the people that have gone specifically after like SJW content and that kind of content, that stuff has dried up insane. It's just dried up. Uh, those people aren't posting on YouTube anymore. They're, they're, they're maybe not posting as much on Twitter or they're, they're hiding in their own little echo chambers to where this kind of stuff never gets to them because of block bots or, you know, block lists or so on and so forth. And as a result, the, the anti SJW YouTubers, and I've said this to, to many of them in person at VidCon, I'm like, the content is drying up and that's why the infighting has begun simply because they need to maintain their channels for one. They need to keep pumping out daily content. It, it, you know, I mean, I pump out a lot of content. I fully admit that, but I try to find different things to talk about whether some do well or don't. That's, you know, up and up to the audience to watch. But, you know, you, you look at people that spend their entire focus on on going after like the left in some of this regard and it's just there's nothing there it's it's at the bottom of the well and so they start turning their attentions uh, almost cannibalistically on each other uh over things that normally wouldn't in enrage them but it does now but then when you look at let's say like the skeptics versus the alt-right the the skeptics you know, they, they've been labeled the alt-right and they don't want to be labeled the alt-right any longer. You know, I mean, shit, they, what, who, who, someone's calling Stefan Molyneux alt-right today. You know, <laughs> like, Stefan is, is not alt-right, but it, that's again, just the terminology that's being thrown at anyone who just disagrees with that narrative. And so then you've got the actual alt-right, uh, who are enjoying this newfound fame and the skeptics are getting kind of pissed because now they're being lumped in with them. And it just becomes this, you know, really a big circle jerk. Well, yeah, I mean, these two groups have had a huge pissing match going back and forth for a while now. And I mean, I know there's a lot of history. I know there's some shit that's been going down for the last couple of weeks that I've watched play out. Um, but the the Google thing just, it, it freaks me out a little bit. Because, uh, I, I mean, I do have concerns. Listen, a lot of the information that's come out has talked about how Google employees will network with other social media sites, right? I mean, that, yeah. that seems to be kind of confirmed. And a lot of these ex-Google employees hold some pretty radical political beliefs. And, uh, you know, that's that's pinned on their social media platforms, uh, supporting groups like Antifa and Black Bloc and, you know, shit like that. Uh, even one of the anonymous sources that was quoted saying that it wasn't just anti-SJW stuff, it was anti-communist stuff that was getting, getting flagged and fucked with. Um, Listen, man, I mean, when you're sign signing up for AdSense, when you're signing up for Super Chat, you're putting in your fucking details. You're putting in your yeah. financial information. You're putting in addresses, social security numbers. I, I mean, is it safe? Is it secure? I would it's argue, I would say more than likely it is. Uh, the, I mean, unless somebody like deep in that particular side of, you know, Google is able to, you know, get in there and get that information. I would argue that it, that it's relatively safe. But if, if by some chance there's a breach, then it's, it's done, you know, then it's, 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 it's gone. But what we're seeing now is probably like what they do is they don't come after you via AdSense in terms of giving out your personal information that they try to do is they try to flag you for inappropriate content while you use AdSense and therefore get that revoked which then forces you to either have to go to an MCN, which is a gigantic waste of time on YouTube, completely uh, just not worth it for anyone watching at home. Uh, or, you know, you have to go to them to PayPal in order to try to get some kind of fan funding. Well, PayPal is so much, it's so easy to get them to take away your PayPal. They're doing that right now. Certain groups that are right leaning, that have a PayPal for donations that aren't even really doing anything horrible are having those PayPal, uh, those, those accounts closed under, you know, reasons for harassment or whatever shit they want to say. And then you've got, you know, then you've got the Patreon route and the Patreon route kind of drew its line in the sand when it come, came to Lauren Southern. And I, you know, I listened to you d discuss it with, with Stick Sex and Hammer, and I kind of see where Patreon is coming from. But then of course his attempt to kind of further justify it, I think also kind of screwed it up. Well, I, uh, I think uh, Masterson brought up a funny point, man. I, I wasn't even really paying attention. I listened to what Jack Conte had to say. I watched the video, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what what was the uh, little thing he was talking about? Uh, measurable, observable behavior? Yeah. And Masterson was laughing because he's like, basically, they're literally calling it a fucking mob when they come to take your shit away. Like, I know. Jack Conte has created a literal mob to come and take your fucking money away. 
uh, which I, I thought was pretty clever. I, I hadn't really picked up on that when I was listening to Conte. I caught I caught the like... I caught the acronym, but I didn't really like put that together. It's very similar to Zoe Quinn's Crash Override Network or Con. Right, right. You know, it's one of those weird things. Um, <laughs> you know, so maybe maybe Hatreon takes a place, but. I don't know. It's just I think there's some serious shit going on with Google. I, I think this employee was kind of the tip of the iceberg with it. And I, it just it, they're so monolithic. They're they're so ingrained into so much different things. And some of their policies don't make sense. You know, they'll say to you, uh, we won't allow advertising on certain content, right? Like uh, hate speech and stuff like yeah. that. We're not going to let you do that. But they'll let you do a stream where you scream uh, nigger at the top of your head and people can give you super chat money. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's that seems like a really bizarre double standard within their own policies of how that works. So I, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, is it because people, when they give Super Chat money, a cut of that goes to Google? So they're OK with yeah. the hate speech when they get the money directly? 30 percent of so, Super Chat is what goes to Google. 30 so, percent. So this isn't like some moral stand they're taking. They're not saying no. we don't we don't like your content because it's terrible and it's wrong. It's just we're not getting enough of a cut of it to allow it onto our platform. Well, I think what it boils down to is it, it, is it bypasses the uh, it bypasses the advertisers completely. What a lot of people, you know, what I've seen come out of the apocalypse uh, is a lot of like a lot of hyperbole, a lot of rhetoric surrounding it. I, I don't disagree that there is a definite implicit bias within Google as a whole that does trickle down to YouTube. You know, I saw Susan Wojcicki say that when she read that memo, you know, it pained her inside. I'm, I'm sorry, science and facts bother you. But when you when you take a look at what they've done, like let's say this whole situation now with um, the kind of sectioning off content, you know that they released last week, it wasn't anything really different. During when the, at the beginning stages of the adpocalypse, one of Google's VPs gave a, a, a talk somewhere. For, I, I did a video on this, and he said that this content, this this hateful supremacist content, that's extremist stuff that everyone's bitching about, is one one thousandth of the amount of content uploaded to YouTube, and probably even less than that or more than that in terms of just it's so minuscule that they know that it's an issue they know that it's a, a, a you know they know that it exists but it also is is so small that it doesn't even really register in the grander scale of things it's just that the wall street journal was able to shine a light on this this fucking video you know that that chief keith video if you look at the numbers you know how much money that video made jim twenty dollars and 44 cents that's it yeah right it's 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 weird isn't it yeah, it's so weird. But the thing is, you know as well, you don't run ads in your videos. I run ads in my videos, and, I, and a lot of other people do too. And I, I guarantee you, anyone who does this as a full-time job knows for a goddamn fact, if you put the word nigger in the title of a video, it's not going to run ads, whether it's through an MCN or not. It's just <laughs> it's that, not going to do it. Is that a guaranteed? But if you do a super chat with that in the title, they're fine taking that 30 <laughs> Yeah, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. But putting it in there, Putting it in there and running it for six months, it, no, uh -uh. it's like it wouldn't have happened. The fact that the guy said that he had a McDonald's ad, a Toyota ad, and a, uh, a Starbucks ad running every time he refreshed it is either a lie or one of those absolute flukes of a situation. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I you know, it's entirely possible that you know, YouTube made this whole thing happen. They they directed that guy to that video. Someone, you know, they they set the thing up in order to direct ads of that nature there in order to, you know, prompt this to happen. I mean, that's a huge tinfoil hat conspiracy theory that I have no proof for, but there's no other explanation that that truly backs up what the Wall Street Journal published. Uh, especially coming after their entire PewDiePie situation where you know that they totally just took it what he said out of context in order to defame him. So. Right. I, I mean, it, it feels like this has been done in steps and it feels like it's it's not done yet. I you know, it's little by little for, you know, we're going to we're going to redo the ad thing. We're going to call that the adpocalypse. And oh, you guys are going to have to bear with it. Now we, we've got a little bit more hate speech. Now we've got a, a trusted flagger program. Now we've got uh, limbo state for your your information to go into. Uh, I mean, shit, it's going to reach the point where the, I bet they're going to disable embedding on other sites when you puts in that limbo state. So even if you thought you could run your own site, like imagine Molyneux, right? He's got his own free domain radio. Yeah. So let's say they wanted to go after Molyneux. Well, okay, we'll put his videos in limbo. Well, Molyneux might think, whatever, I'll just embed them on my website. It doesn't affect me. But now they can't be embedded. So he has to find a completely new service to use to host his videos. Or even yeah. dual, dual uploading. You know, I know Vidme lets you do this weird dual upload thing where it will uh, take the YouTube video and immediately 
like uh, link it and embed it onto your Vidme account. I I'm sure it's going to get cut off there. Like, I just, I have, I, I just, I think this is getting worse and worse. And I, you know, I've noticed a lot of people have kind of talked over the last half a year, and they've taken almost kind of a rose-tinted approach when looking at Google's intentions for this. I don't think Google's on the side of the the basic user. I don't think they give a shit about any of us. I think. Um, you know, some people steering the ship are making some really bad decisions, and I think there's a, a corporate mentality that runs maybe pretty deep. And I, I think that this a particular individual probably helped to highlight that, you know, with the incident that happened with the memo. Or, or as they call it, the, the manifesto, like he's some kind of fucking supervillain living in a, a volcano off some I island know. somewhere. I, I just I – love, I love how they handled that. You know, I, I just love – uh, that how they how they did that. I actually ex I explained the the diversity memo to my girlfriend's mother yesterday, uh, who is like you know doesn't go on social media, doesn't watch YouTube, do doesn't you know she voted Trump, but she's she watches Fox News. She doesn't give a shit about much else. And I explained it to her, and she was like, "But wait, there are biological differences between men and women. This has been known forever. What are these people trying to say?" And it's 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 just cracks me up that you know someone who's not involved in any of the cultural identity politics nonsense will look at that and just go, yeah, no, I think everyone's pretty much on board with this. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I, you know, like what I I look at the situation and I think to myself, what the fuck are we gonna do? Like, I, not only can Google basically take you off their video sharing platform, they probably talk to other social media and can get your ass kicked off there because I'm sure Jack and um, you know Dorsey and Zuckerberg probably probably hate your you know hate our asses too um but then they fuck with search results so like even if you went out and built your own website and it did really well that you fucking disappear i know people bring up if you look up like uh, if you google 8chan sometimes it won't fucking show up you get like pl instead of dot net so I, I don't know it just it feels like a really shit situation we're in right now and i know that this has been going on for years hell uh you look at ada initiative right we want more diversity and and technology they did uh, a presentation called the pretender syndrome and it was literally women in tech complaining because they felt like frauds. And they're like, how can we how can we get over the fact that we feel like we're frauds and fake our way through doing our job on a daily basis? Oh, my God. And th this is a seminar video they put out, and they, they did diversity classes on it. Or you've got shit like the Gnome Outreach Program, right? So you've got this this uh, group, no, you know, they're, they're working on this project. And what do they spend the money on, the money on under the you know leadership of uh, this new diversity mandate? Uh, outreach program for women programmers and it bankrupts the fucking thing yeah uh so it, it, like and this this happens a lot and these people seem to shuffle from one fucking place to the next and it's it's just i don't i don't know what the fuck is going on it it just feels like well it's it's a lot of unchecked uh a lot of unchecked whining really you know it, it's kind of almost death by a thousand cuts is the best way i can describe it so you figure this started off probably in the 90s, you know, when you had the – when I was, you know, leaving school. I don't know how old you are, but I'm 35. When I was leaving high school, you started hearing about, oh, every kid gets a trophy. Every kid gets a gold star. All of uh, of this type of, you know, oh, everyone, everyone gets rewarded for just trying and no one gets rewarded for succeeding because we don't want people to feel bad. And then that permeates itself over the course of the past, you know, 17, 18 years. And now we got these kids that were young then that are adults now that – that really do feel like they are entitled to this stuff. And if they're not good enough at something, then it's meant for the rest of the system to change to benefit them versus them getting good. You know, I, you almost want people to sit there and, and approach life like a goddamn Dark Souls game. Do you suck at it? Well, get good, fucker. <laughs> the game's not going to change for you. You know, I'm, I'm looking at your, your chat because you have super chat enabled. So like somebody yeah. gave you a 10, right, to, to say something. Yeah. So 30% of that's going to Google, three bucks. Yeah. Is there nobody that can come up with, I mean, I know Patreon is competing with Patreon. Is there nobody that can make a plugin where they can give you super chat money that doesn't go through fucking Google and maybe take I think there's to run stream that labs. You know, there's, I don't know if that works on YouTube, though. The super chat idea is just good because it's it's just right there. But yeah, it's like, you know, I tell people, I'm like, look, I, I really appreciate super chat, but it's like if you really want to support, you know, and not have it go to the company, like Patreon would be good or PayPal would be more direct. Yeah, PayPal takes a percentage, but it's like 2%, not 30%. You know, the super chat nonsense when it comes to what they take is just insane because they don't like they don't really like explain why they're taking that much like it's oh we need 30 percent to process the payment like really i go to arco it's 35 cents to use my fucking debit card to process the payment why do you need 30 percent 
I see. I see one of your. I, this guy's asked this question like five times, and he now paid you to ask it. Do you mind if I answer him? Oh yeah, no, sorry. I I've been reading the chat, but off and on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, okay, so four pro, uh, posterities asking. Uh, mind asking Medicare if he sees this similar to the Chinese Cultural Revolution or a nonviolent Khmer Rouge year or zero kind of thing? If you're talking about how it seems like they're trying to purge a certain kind of culture and cleanse it from the internet, yeah, I kind of see it in a similar way. Um, see, I'm unfamiliar with the Khmer Rouge. Uh, year zero thing I, that I'm actually unfamiliar. Uh, I, with. I'm just going off uh, the Chinese Cultural Revolution and what, what okay. the, basics, the the small pieces of that that I know. You're asking me the wrong questions, but I, I think I get the gist of what he's asking. Okay. Fuck your monopoly money, you cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this unknown archive. He's he's uh, he also said here uh, ten dollars super chat. Lycos.com is the future. Well, there you go. Okay. I don't know, dude. GeoCities was a thing. Don't forget fucking GeoCities. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, to answer your question, it does feel like there's a bit of a purge. Uh, you know, I've said this previously in streams that I did with other people. I think this is a really hard reaction to what happened with Trump winning. And I think they don't like yeah. the, the culture they saw that was supportive of that and that helped to kind of facilitate his win. And I think they all have this kind of not like I, I, I almost I don't know what kind of a, a term social media. It's like white guilt, but for social media magnets. <laughs> Right, they all feel guilty because they feel like it's on their watch. They let it happen. Yeah. So, so now they need to clean their hands of it, and the way they do that is getting you uh, shadow banned, uh, deleting your Twitter account, getting you zucked, or uh, black holing your YouTube channel. I mean, they want this shit to disappear, and I really do feel like it's got a political bias to it, and I really do feel like it's in preparation for elections that are upcoming, because they they really fucked up. They thought it was well, a joke. They thought it was a joke. I mean, they thought. All these assholes with their stupid frog cartoons are going to make themselves look like sexist, racist. Nobody will ever listen to them. And now we've got Donald Trump as president, and they're like, "Fucking shit, we really fucked the pooch on this one." They did. No, they 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 really did. I mean, I, I you know, I did not vote Trump, but I still absolutely love how the thing played out in that regard. It was complete underestimate underestimation of how meme culture works. But at the same time, while I do agree with you that a lot of this probably does feel like a res like a response to Trump winning. It also is a response to people like Paul Joseph Watson hitting a million subscribers. Uh, the 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 type of conservative commentary on YouTube in terms of uh, maybe rational conservative commentary like is not as big as you would like it to be. I, I you know, but you get stuff like Paul Joseph Watson and Infowars that are out there preaching Pizzagate as being real. And all of the other bullshit they spew constantly, which is just proven, you know, false all the time, is able to find themselves in this position of prominence. And then those kind of voices have now been raising up. And and that's a direct result of Trump winning, um, which is uh, – and I've, I've battled these people off and on all year. I've had, you know, like Baked Alaska. I don't know if he was – he's a big Trump supporter on, on Twitter. He goes out there and makes a comment when the uh, the Netflix trailer, 30-second Netflix trailer for Dear White People dropped. And he's like, Netflix, why do you support white genocide? And I, I called him out on it because I'm like, dude, like, come on, man. Like, you might be being a shit poster. You're being a fucking idiot. Like, you know, have have some – like, if you're going to debate this issue, debate the issue. Don't just – you know. But then again, it's also – it's memes. It's memes, and I got baited by the meme. I'll admit that. You know, but I ended up losing like 600 subscribers in a day for just calling out Baked Alaska on that shit. Like, that's how it got post-election. It got really, really bad. If I criticized Trump, I would drop four or 500 subscribers in a day. Well, you got to know your base. I don't know who subscribed to you to watch as your content. I'm not sure what your demographics are. So I, I'm sure. You're well, yeah, no, I if, wasn't if expecting that. Stuff, if you're saying stuff that they don't like. I um, wasn't. Yeah. Like, I wasn't expecting that at all. Like, and the thing is, too, I don't care. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change what I'm saying. You know, people joined up because I was criticizing Hillary, which is what I heard a lot about. Uh, and, all right, cool. I didn't want Hillary to win. I didn't want Trump to win. This is where we are, where we are. But it's like I'm not going to stop with my opinion. Uh, and again, it's been a, it's been a bit of a tumultuous year as a response as a result of that. But things have even the you know even themselves out. But I've noticed this rise in conservative voices. Um, you know, I was at a family barbecue the other day, and my cousin uh, was asking me, he's like, "Hey, do you watch uh, Stick Hex and Hammer Six Six Six?" You know, and I'm, like, I'm like, I know who he is. I've watched a few of his videos. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of what he says, but, you know, I, it, I know who he is and I have nothing against the guy. Uh, so it's like, yeah, people, you know, there are people that are talking about these these uh, these conservative voices and there do need to be conservative voices as well as liberal voices on this platform. It's just unfortunate. Well, that see, the that's that's the thing. I don't 
I think the conservatives will be the first group that you get targeted, and this is what concerns me. Is I, I, I don't think it's just going to be conservatives. I think a lot of people are going to get fucked, and that that's yeah. going to really hit people that are funny. Like if you notice a lot of like comedy channels and shit that make a lot of really edgy jokes, they're done. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's not just going to be that conservative component, but I I think that the crackdown we're seeing is directly related, like I said, directly related to kind of that the the election and the momentum that was building up and the culture they saw kind of growing online, and I think they're they're just they're trying to go as balls to the wall, crazy and extreme on the we'll take care of it ourselves uh, mentality. I mean, the fucking ADL is helping with the Trusted Flaker program. And they think I, uh, I wonder how much of that, though, is just like a is just like a, you know, like one of those hand waving things. Uh, like I how much know. influence I, I, does I, the ADL actually have? I've had some people send me uh, information related to what the back end of this looks like. And they, they it their system is interesting, to say the least, on how they're approaching what videos need to go and what don't. OK, Um but, you know, ADL could be you right PR, but I, I do think these kind of groups have a, a larger voice than maybe people realize. And, you know, the ADL is afraid of a fucking frog. You know, you know what I mean? Like, Well, I, I, I wonder how much of that – again, see, every time I see something like that, I wonder how much of that is this opportunistic bullshit. You know, the ADL clearly wants to advance their agenda. Hillary comes out, talks about the frog. Oh, just that was – that whole th- – oh, that was so cringy, you know. And and then all of a sudden there's that article on her website about how the frog is a symbol of 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 the Nazi suppri- or oppression whatever and then the ADL jumps on that and makes this huge stink about it and I just I'm, I'm wondering how much of that was really meant to push the agenda because since then they haven't as far as I've seen and maybe they have but I haven't seen it yet they haven't really done much in terms of showcasing that like you know people make fun of Pepe the only person right now I see still bringing up Pepe on a semi-regular basis uh, is Samantha B. And why I'm watching her content, I don't know, but I am. Uh, you know, <laughs> you've got you've got some shit taste, mate. I don't know. What I, you know what? You know what? It's like nothing else is on, and I'm all like, well, I'll see how much I hate Samantha B. today. I, it's a hate watch. I will fully admit, I watch her out of hate watch. <laughs> I, I'd rather watch fucking paint dry, but I mean, to each their own, I suppose. <laughs> you know, it's just like I, I keep thinking to myself, like, remember when she was good on The Daily Show? What happened? Oh, right. She wore a pantsuit now. But no, it's it's just, yeah, it's like, but she brings it up frequently. She brings it up as a way to attack the alt-right. She uses it as a dismissive tactic in order to further push her agenda. And I get that as being a late night host is what they're all trying to do. But it, it comes across to me, and the same thing with the ADL using it, it's just all intellectually dishonest. Any any two seconds of research will show you precisely what's going on, and what pisses. And I and I agree with you that they're trying to silence a lot of these type of voices because I feel like rationality and and you know reasonability have gone out the fucking window, especially if you swear. If you swear, they you know they try to discredit you as much as you possibly can. Like well, let, well let me get you put on a blacklist. Uh, fuck fuckity fuck fuck fuck. Tough. Let me Jesus let me shit, let me, fucking Christ, let me sink this fucking ship. Yeah. You've already, <laughs> we've already both dropped the N word. You, you might what, as well just say "kike faggot Jew nigger." Jesus. Oh, I hope somebody. I hope somebody got that sound. <laughs> God clip. damn it! There you go. God see, you loosen. You loosen it up that's, a little bit. See? Yeah. There you go. That's gonna. You know what? You know what? Is that gonna end up on one of your videos? Just like the fucking ad block thing. Can you do? Can you do an oy vey voice for me and tell me <laughs> one of the cho- you're one of the chosen people? Can you do that? Oy vey. Yeah. Can say oy vey. Turn off that pesky ad block. They'll love you for it. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Hold on. This is fuck it. Oy vey, turn off that pesky ad block. There you go. You got to work on the Jew voice a little bit, Matt. It's a little. I'm Canadian. Like what the fuck? I'm like. I know it's it's you're you're, 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 it's not very convincing, but I give you an A for effort on it at at least. I give you an A for effort. No, you know what's funny is like uh, uh, when I met I met Boogie two nine eight eight at VidCon, and he was like, "Man, your you do not sound anything like your videos." Because because it, it was more or less like like the whole like you know over pre- presentation on the on the opening. Oh, fuck. You know, can I ask you something about Boogie? And you can yeah. refuse to answer this if you want to stay on good terms with him. But I've heard this fucking rumor so much, and it drives me nuts. And I I don't know if it's true or not. Does he really? Uh, <laughs> I know this sounds so stupid, but does he really wear diapers? I don't, dude. I don't know. I've okay, never heard that there, rumor. There I, is I've a ne- fucking story that he was at some convention, and he shit himself. And, and like shit's going down his fucking legs and he's got like a poopy diaper. And I don't know if that's fucking real or not, 
But, you know, like internet rumors are so convincing sometimes and you hear them so many times. So I don't know. Can I, you confirm you know, or deny this for me? I, I can't confirm nor deny. I don't know. I, 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 I'll tell you what. Next time I see him at, at VidCon, uh, I'll try to pat his ass and I'll, I'll just I'll check. I'll just That's like, right. Pants him. Just you know, be like, hey, it's, uh, just goofing. It's just a prank, bro. Just pants it's his just ass. It's just a prank, bro. I just want to see if some huckies are under there. You know what I mean? Like, I just want <laughs> some fucking confirmation on this shit. I don't know. I don't. I'm pretty sure he's mobile. He's mobile. I'm pretty sure he's able to uh, to, to use the restroom with without diapers. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. But you know how it is. Dude. There's all the there's all the rumors that that pop up around anybody who does shit. You know, there's rumors about you that circulate constantly. Oh you my know. God! Yeah, you know, I mean, I I am the leader of a Brando drinking or no a Brando swilling gang of internet murderers and rapists, and uh, I'm partially responsible for Sandy Hook, and uh, <laughs> I get gays thrown off of rooftops. You know, I've got I've got quite the fucking resume if you really look into it. It's pretty impressive all the shit that I've apparently done. Well, every time you change names, uh, y y your legend just grows. That's what I know, happens. But, you know, I'm on like number number 38 at this point. I just I'm honestly <laughs> surprised you haven't changed over. You've crossed over the hundred hundred thousand subscriber mark. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've got I've got uh, alternate accounts I use just to fuck about and do the old style YouTube stuff that I like to do, which is just fucking with people. Um, but <laughs> you know, those are so out in the wild, people don't know about them. So that's that's kind of nice to have, I guess, to fall back on. I, I you know. I put out uh, videos on the main channel, but then I'm putting like one or two videos out a week on these other ones, and people have no fucking clue. Yeah, I didn't know you had other you had alternate channels. Very I much. Would, if, I'm pretty sure if people knew about it, though, it would be all over. They would be they'd all get, you know, they'd all get just blown up. Because I mean, like there are people that I like, you know, people that I've met uh, just randomly, you know, we talk YouTube and they're like, hey, do you ever watch like you know Mr. Mediker? And I'm like, yeah, I've been watching him for years. Like, oh, I love his content. Like, and that's that's the thing. Like, when uh, when you when you joined up Patreon, I have to ask you though. I have to ask. Yeah. When you ahead. when you did the Patreon thing, were you <laughs> expecting me to give you shit? I wasn't expecting. Well, I was expecting shit from my audience because, I, again, my stance on monetization has always been what it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I still think it's what it is. You know, I, I still kind of hold the opinion. Like, I'm, I'm I have an old school mentality when it comes to the internet. I mean, I still look at YouTube as just fucking YouTube. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I find it so fucking funny with you know the skeptics self-labeling themselves the skeptics. Like, man, I, you're making you're making internet videos talking about blue-haired chicks who. Uh, you know, want to turn their fucking menstrual blood into brownies. Like, I can't, you know what I mean? Like, that's the shit you're focusing on. Let's not get too overly intellectual about this Well, shit. I mean, like, and that's where, like, I don't personally, like, consider myself part of that group. Like, that was the thing with VidCon is uh, I went there, the, you know, the term I was using was, like, I was kind of like a man without a country, so to speak, because I cover so much, you know, so many random topics and I have my own way of doing things. I'm not going to be, like, lining up to, you know, you know, be with the exact same group as everybody. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's like, it's, I think now it's more of like kind of a, a it starts, it's, I think it's been used as a term that is now being more for just like the lulls than anything else, especially because yeah. armored skeptic actually made a hat that says skeptic TM on it. Yeah. You know, you, you got to be careful with that shit. I, 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 the internet works in cycles, right? The thing that's funny today gets made fun of tomorrow and that, that skeptic stuff and the Kakistani stuff, that's going to be the Guy Fox mask of, uh, you know, the next two years. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. The Kakistani thing, like I laugh at it, but it's like, I don't take any bit of it seriously. But then at, then at VidCon, some guy comes up to me and he's all like, Hey, mundane Matt, can you sign my Kakistani flag? You should have put on a Guy Fox mask and asked him if he wanted to go bake a cake for Scientology. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh man, the good old Project Chinology. I miss those days. To be honest with you, I miss those days. But see, those, I mean, that's the fun. yeah. But that's the mindset I'm coming at the internet with. I mean, yeah. that's why monetization has always been so weird for me. I mean, like I always saw YouTube as a way of putting up funny content or just doing dumb, goofy shit. Yeah, um, no, I hear and, you. and now it's morphed into something that's different. And that's what's so fucking bizarre about it, right? I mean, for like seven years, it was just a place to put videos, and then. For like two years, people were like, I can make a living off of this. And now here comes Google saying, no, you can't. Yeah. We're going to we're going to completely fuck over the entire program we just built up. So the site is filled with nothing but Elsa and Spider-Man uh, <laughs> pissing in a bathtub, you know, so. I don't oh, know I know. I know. You know, what the, the shittiest thing with that, though, is I was in the uh, I was in the process of closing escrow on my house. And my girlfriend said that she was pregnant and then this shit happened. 
Yeah, you've, I'm just got, like, you, you've, got, you've got incredibly bad luck. I, I mean, that's what I meant when I was talking to Sticks, right? Yeah. I saw I saw what you're you know like milk toast and you're you I, I I you know it's insulting but your your content I, your content is really safe let's be honest Matt you no it is it is but your, it's like that on purpose yeah but you could play any of your videos in a workplace environment and nobody's gonna do a double take and be like that I need to talk to HR so the fact that your numbers and your ad revenue are down should be should be scaring the shit out of people that actually do stuff where you well couldn't play there work. there are other aspects to that as well for one uh like the thing is okay so I was with broadband TV. Right. I just left there today. So now I'm, I'm back on AdSense and I'm waiting to see what happens next. Um, I was with broadband for the past couple of years and I had this insane deal with them. Like my contract is over. I'll fucking talk about it. I don't give a shit. Uh, I had 100% revenue share. I paid them nothing and I was on a higher CPM. So I was making more per, now, per thousand who, views. Whose dick did you have to suck to get that? No, no, I didn't have to do, I didn't have to suck any dick. The guy, the, the dude who came to me to recruit me. All right. He kept like upping his promises. I'm not even kidding you. He hits me up and he goes like, he, you know, he tracks me down via Skype and everything is before I showed my face. And so he, he did his homework to find me. So I, I was going to hear him out, you know, and then he goes like, oh, what do you want? I'm like, I want a hundred thousand subscribers. I want that fucking plaque, you know? And he goes like, all right, well, we can get you a hundred thousand by the end of the year. We will get you there. And I was at 55,000 at the time. And I'm all like, yeah, but I don't really want to pay you guys like 30%. You know, that's not fuck that. And he comes back the next day and he goes, okay, I talked with my team. We can get you to 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. This was, by the way, like the end of April 2015. And I'm like, Two, you just upped it 100,000 from the 45 you promised me yesterday. Okay. So they, 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 what, was, what was the draw? Why did they want you so bad? I, this, I think what it was, this dude was new. I think this guy was new and he was trying to sign people. You know, I think he was just trying to sign people and get them done. But the thing is, he came back to me the next day and he said, okay, no shit. We can get you 300,000 subscribers by the end of the year. He upped it another 100K. And I'm going, okay, what? Wait, are, are you sure the name of this group wasn't Latveria Media? This sounds very <laughs> DSP-like in the recounting of how this is going down. It just, it just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, no, I don't, I, at all. I don't get it at all. And so I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, what's the catch? No, what's the catch? He goes like, well, you know, it would be, we'll, we'll, we'll put you on a preferred program. And it will be 10%, you know, to us. And I'm all like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still playing hard to get. I'm like, this, this, there's no way this guy can get me what he's promising me, period. None. Unless they bought subscribers or they pimped me as hard as they pushed someone like PewDiePie, never going to happen. Uh, and then he goes, he goes, well, how about this? We'll put you on a, on a trial program, six months, 100% revenue share to you, higher CPM, and that's that. And I'm all like, oh, yeah, all right, cool. We'll try for six months. I'll cancel. You know, I'll cancel. So I do, I set the whole thing up. I get a call from his boss like the next day who wants to do like a follow up, you know, because it's a total sales bullshit. And I basically tell him what the dude promised me. Then I send him screenshots because this guy didn't tell me this over voice chat and Skype. He wrote it down in the chat. So in writing, a broadband employee was promising me 245,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I got him. That's that's it. Yeah, I mean, I've I've had people. I've tried to make it very clear I'm not going to do ads on my thing, but I still yeah. get I still get offers. Like I had one that came through, and they're like, "We've got we've got studio locations in California you can use, and we've got editors and audio, and we'll we'll hook you up with all of this." And I sent them back a very nice, honest reply, and I was like, "You understand the content I make, right? Who do you think is going to advertise on a video about adults dressing up as foxes and shitting themselves? <laughs> like, do you imagine the Disney Corporation is going to want to label their fucking products on that?" Exactly. And then I get I get these messages all the time too from like companies, like apps and that kind of shit, and they're like, "Please do, please, you know, like we'll pay you to do this." I had one guy offer six grand for like some app program and some kind of like this shit. Um, and so I put out a warning video. I, I put this up on VidMe. But uh, I made it really clear, like, if you from now on send me um, promotional shit to make me advertise your product, I, I will advertise your product. Uh, I won't take the money, but I'm going to make it the most racist, sexist shit, and I will associate your name brand with it. <laughs> and I will blast that out to fucking everyone I can, because I'm so tired of the fucking, it's like, it's constant shit. They constantly needle you with that shit. But, no, um, they do. I get them all the time. Uh, I, I got one the other day, and it was like, so there's a company called FameBit that I've worked through before. The last sponsored video I did, I worked through them because uh, I don't mind doing it. Like I, I have, I, this is a business. I, I, you know, I pay taxes. This is a business. 
I, you know, I understand we'll have differences on, on the monetization part of it. Oh, but really quick though, to quickly finish my point with that, when, when people, when, when you posted the Patreon, I got a lot of messages from people going like, Oh, are you going to give Jim a hard time about it? And I, I don't know if you remember what I said, uh, in response to that, because I tweeted at you at the time wait, I wait, said, wait, what you should have done is gone to the video and said, turn that pesky thing off. Now that's I what should I, have, that's but I should have, but I didn't, I didn't. And, and legitimately, cause I got you here. I genuinely respect your content. You know, I know you give me shit. It's funny. I laugh at it, but I genuinely respect your content. And I'd love to see you do this as a career. If you wanted to, no pressure, nothing like that. It's one of the reasons why I wanted you to go to VidCon. I genuinely respect you as a creator. Oh, holy shit. I, I will never go to VidCon. I mean, like, I get it. Some people <laughs> want to turn this into a career. All right. Like, I don't have, there, there, are, there, are, there are content creators I see as very talented. Like, I think we would agree on a few of them. Like, maybe Red Letter Media, right? I mean, do you think? I, I watched their Ghostbusters thing last night, and I laughed my ass off. But, like, their general content, I don't care for. Yeah, but I, what I'm talking about is like production value, the, yeah. the, the script writing. I mean, they put effort into it. Yeah. And so you, I can see that as a business that they will probably be very successful going forward with. But in my opinion, at least when it comes to YouTube and stuff, like this is, at least for me, is a stopgap measure until I get my shit sorted and I can go back to what I consider the real world. <laughs> um, it, it, like there is such a danger with people getting too hopeful with making money off of doing internet things. And sure. It really takes a very special kind of person to be able to do it for a long time. Like I, I make fun of Molly New a lot, but he's he's made it work for himself. Yeah, I know he has. Um, but take somebody like DSP, I mean, or Spoonie One. You know, these people that had they were on top of the world. They were some of the, you know, they were doing very good numbers. You know, I, we all like to make fun of DSP, but for a while he was getting a lot of fucking views and making oh, a he was. lot of fucking money. And so then they, you know, they go out, they buy a car, they buy a house. Um, they, they, they feel good. They think it's going to be sustainable for a long time. And then, you know, a year or two from now, they're, they're, they disappear. Like the channels that are coming up right now, like the new shit that's coming out this minute today will be at what our numbers are within a fourth of the time that it took us to get to where we are. Yeah, like, probably. It, the cycle just gets so quick and it gets quicker and quicker and quicker until you're irrelevant. And so there's such a risk with trying to like hang your hat on. Well, it, it's YouTube all about diversification. Career. That's what it boils down to. It's not just like the thing is I don't want like like as much as I appreciate Patreon and I, I appreciate everyone who helps out. I don't want to rely on that. Like the reason why I like ads is because I feel like it's just like, you know, yes, it's a small time commitment and so on and so forth. But it's like that's it. You know, it's not asking someone to choose between like giving me a dollar or buying a packet of ramen. You know, like that's the way I personally view it. And then, and when when the ad apocalypse happened, I would I made, the joke I made was this is going to turn into a real Sophie's choice if it's not rectified within a few months because they're going to have people out there that want to genuinely support those that they like, uh, and they're going to find themselves either having to pick one to focus on or spread it really thin, and they're going to have to make those choices, and that's going to be really hard for them. Oh, you uh, haven't if, you you haven't even gotten yeah the Thunderdome hasn't happened yet, but that is that is coming. Oh, that's coming. Uh, no, no, that, that's that, coming. That, once that advertising revenue really does sink for all you guys, it, it's going to be a fucking free for all for who can get the Patreon box. Oh yeah, no, it's going to be like oh I know oh uh, trust me I know it's uh, I can already see it happening. I can already I'm I, I'm already you know prepping for certain you know for in my mind at least seeing certain people gonna start going that way um and it's it's sad it's unfortunate because there is a market that there is such a market for where things are right now there's eyeballs on the screen i mean look my content might be banal and milk toast and whatever and i get that it's mundane it's in the name right but it's like i still pull in two to 2.3 million views a month you know so there are people that genuinely like watching my content there are those that don't but it's still it's there there's eyeballs that are there same with you same with sargon sticks hex and hammer everybody uh, that that's able to get to a certain point. So it's like there should be advertisers that are willing to step in and fill that gap. What I think is happening right now is because things are still a bit tumultuous with the system is they are holding they're holding Google a bit hostage. You know, they're playing they're 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 using this moment where they can try to renegotiate deals. And that's one of the reasons why YouTube is bending over backwards to be like, no, we're totally going to work on this. We're totally going to make it right, even though what they're saying is is, is almost nothing, you know, and, and unless. OK, if we start seeing like the ADL start like, tar you know, targeting videos specifically on YouTube or on on Twitter and, and tweeting them at YouTube or some shit like that then then yeah they have way more power than they should but in the meantime it says to me like this is just a pr stunt in order to appease the advertisers considering 
that this whole thing started as a result with, uh, you know, um, the, the, the British government pulling their ads from from google because of the extremist content was running their ads on it and then that just trickled through pewdiepie and then here to america uh, and so you know it's it's right, I, I, feel but, like... I i would warn against uh, and i've heard this this point brought up by a few people that it, it's google kind of being held hostage and you know google's really on our side you know but these evil oh no they're not on our side they're not on I, our side. You've period, got to understand, but... Google is a massive corporation, and yeah. it's it's bigger and richer than a lot of the people that do advertisements with it. And it's not just YouTube that Google serves. I mean, they serve ads fucking everywhere. So they have a really strong bargaining position because they can say, listen, you know, okay, Pepsi, you don't like us? Fuck it. None of your products are getting advertised on any goddamn website that we serve. It's always going to be Coca-Cola. How do you like that? Uh, I mean, they can play hardball too, and they can get the the numbers that they want in response. I I just I, I just I don't think I I have a feeling like some people think that like Google secretly want is rooting for us or some shit, and no. they're not. They're they're no. fucking not. And I don't think they're as weak uh, at the bargaining table when it comes to the ads as they like to play on. I think it just helps to serve their narrative of kind of cleaning house a little bit. Like, oh well, yeah, you know. We're, we're held hostage by this. Guess you're not going to make much money. Maybe you're not going to make content anymore. Maybe you should go fuck off to Vimeo. <laughs> maybe. No, maybe. Maybe. I mean, and it's entirely possible. I look at it like this. YouTube, Google. I mean, okay. Like, YouTube only pulls in like 6% of Google's entire earnings, you know. And so when, when the adpocalypse happened, these, these companies, they not only pulled out of YouTube, they pulled out of Google as a whole, which is why, like the number I heard, and I don't have any, I, I can't think of the, the the source to back this up, but I heard it was somewhere in the neighborhood of like twenty seven billion dollars is what it cost Google, you know. And then they shut down a lot of the YouTube ads, but it also impacted other. I think it was like non search engine or non search non searches, whatever the hell it's called. It's basically like, you know, it, it's stuff on websites might still be there, but trying to search for certain stuff may may not be or maybe researched I could, I think I might be wrong on that one but basically it impacted them uh it's you know company wide and and I think they're just trying they're trying to sort it all out well, but I no like, they're not they're I, I not like, on our side yeah I like the narrative that they're like I mean Google you know Google likes to talk about how much YouTube costs them but I've seen companies run massive video platforms like Stage 6 and Divix was you know I mean that's the amount of money it costs for them to host the videos you yeah. know, and serve them up was fucking retarded because at the time when Google was still doing like 240p, four by three, you know, and the shitty YouTube, these stage six fuckers were out of their minds. They're doing like 1080p, high definition. You could watch anime and then immediately watch a porno. They didn't. They didn't give a fuck. They let you put up anything. Oh yeah. And they, uh, they the people offset. at uh, stage six, they were based out of San Diego, actually. Yeah. And, and, and uh, thing... I had friends who worked for them when I when I was going to film school. Yeah, and I, I fucking loved the site, but they offset a lot of their cost by doing smart marketing and by doing smart deals with other companies. I mean, they had a thing worked out with y or Yahoo to, yeah. you know, like when you download the Divix player, Yahoo would do, do something and basically made Yahoo pay for the majority of their fucking cost just to get Yahoo used as a fucking search engine. <laughs> But but, um, but what happened to them? They just they ended up running out of money and closing down. No, that's not what happened. I, oh, I, it's not. I, no. Okay. So the Divix Corporation wanted to get into Hollywood. They wanted their codec to be used for for fucking movies for DVDs. That's and shit true because like that. they, they had the Divix DVD player and you could get them right. for like a and, few and bucks so, a DVD. So when they went to the negotiation table with Hollywood with all the studios, the studios basically said to them, "Hey, listen, you know we'd love to do that." Uh, but you assholes are basically throwing up all our copyrighted content on your video sharing platform. And every time we've asked you to take it down, you basically told us to go fuck ourselves. So <laughs> maybe you need to address that first before we have any negotiations. And so the Divix boardroom had a giant pissing match. Uh, basically, it worked out where uh, one of the people that helped to create Stage 6 offered to raise the money himself. He was going to raise like $15 million to buy it from Divix and make it a separate entity. But because of egos in the boardroom, they said, fuck it, we're shutting it all down. We're not going to sell it to you. We don't care. It's done. I mean, Microsoft made offers. Yahoo made offers. A lot of people made million, million, multi-million dollar offers for stage six. And because of egos in the boardroom, none of them were taken. They just completely sunk it. The funny thing to that is, after this happens, stage six gets shut down. Divix goes back to Hollywood and Hollywood says, you know what? We reconsidered. We're not interested. Okay. That so, would make some sense. 
yeah, you know, so they're basically. St- I don't. I don't even know what Divix does now. I mean, they're they're part of some phone company in like Taiwan or some shit or, nor- or South Korea. Yeah. I, I, so I, they they yeah they completely they shot themselves in the foot by being short sighted by letting egos get in the way. They should have let the guy buy it. If he had, we would have had an alternative to YouTube. I mean, they were doing near the same numbers that YouTube was at the time they got bought out by Google. Well, we would have. They probably would be the predominant platform, just given the codec of Divix, how well the compression worked, and how easily transferable the files were. You know, I mean, because that was a big thing when it came to the copyrighted content. Not saying, not saying I dabbled in any of that, just that I had friends who did. And you know, that was a big thing. And I remember too, there was also you remember the Divix DVD player, right? Yeah, you know, you know what the uh, it kind of sticking a little bit to the stage thing. You, you know what I really liked about stage six and how forward thinking they were. Um, what they allowed you to do was, uh, you can't even do this on YouTube. YouTube tried to do it, and they did a really hollow version of it. But you had your own page, you had your own video uploads and stuff. You could, you know, favorite likes, share, all the same shit you can do on YouTube. But they let you make sub-communities on the website itself. So let's say that all the skeptics, right, wanted to make skeptic uh, at stage six. It would be the hub that all of their channels were combined into, so oh. all of their subscribers could go there, watch all the videos, and get updated on them. And then it had forums built in that the people that set up that hub could moderate. So like it was really crazy. Like they were doing really crazy cool shit. Uh, it still bums me out that they're gone. That's wow. That's I, yeah. I didn't know they did that because uh, uh, interestingly enough, when I was in film school and we first heard of YouTube, uh, you know, I none of us really paid that much attention to it because we thought. Oh, we're all going to go to Hollywood, you know, and, and that whole song and dance. Uh, so it wasn't until when I got to Hollywood, I realized, wait, everyone's doing YouTube. Fuck. <laughs> but no, Divix was uh, was it was interesting. Um, I have to I'll have to go and uh, ask my friend what's who used to work there, maybe what they're doing now. And then I can give you some inside later on. They're probably uh, they're probably hanging from ropes that they put over branches of trees after they realized how big they fucked up. Like that is such a bad yeah, business decision to screw that kind of an asset for you well, have money offer on the table. Just take it. Why? Why completely shut it? You could have just sold it and made profit. What are you doing? Ego is, you know, will, will kill has killed a lot of shit. But it's like it's like, OK, like Vimeo actually came out prior to YouTube and Vimeo has been sustainable, but it's also never gotten that same level. You know, it's never been able to blow up as much. And even now, everyone's like, oh, vid me, vid me, vid me. But it's like, you got fucking Vimeo. Which is established as all hell. It's it actually has a better compression system than YouTube does. No, and you Sticks, can... Sticks brought up something with with Vimeo. Don't you have to pay though for a certain amount of hosting? Um, you know, I I I have to go. You used to, I think. I don't know if anymore, but I also haven't touched Vimeo in. Well, years. and I mean, and shit. That's the crazy thing about VidMe too is they announced a new policy limiting upload total upload lengths or you know your cache of upload ability to fifty gigabytes. So if you have more okay. content than 50 gigabytes, you're going to have to start deleting stuff. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, the fact that YouTube is able to ba- basically kind of hide the 400 years of content open or was it 400 hours of content uploaded every single minute? It's, it some, it's some phenomenally crazy number that they're getting uh, uploaded and watched and viewed and streamed yeah. every fucking day. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Well, also, too, like the C- is like the, I think it was um, – one of the CEOs of YouTube, and not like not Susan Wojcicki, but someone else, one of the higher ups, had said by 2019, like 95 percent of all internet traffic is going to be video related. You know, people are just searching yeah. for video. They're pushing mobile like crazy. Uh, you know, they want people watching mobile. I watch mobile all the time. I know a lot of people that do, and it's just that's kind of where things seem to be headed. And I don't know if there's going to be any way for people on our, I guess, side of things to use that as a platform to continue earning a living. But, I, you know, I mean, I think what we're going to see is people are, are going to have to really diversify uh, their, you know, their, their, their income streams. And you're hearing about this now, but everyone's like, oh, merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. <laughs> yeah, you know, listen, I mean, I watched some guy make some compilation video where we laugh at people falling on their ass. I don't know if I necessarily want to buy a fucking T-shirt with a 420 no scoper funny fall on ass videos branded on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, but someone out there might. That's I think that's the thing to, to to keep in mind too is that there's there's an audience, you know. There there are people that would be willing to purchase like a, a Monday mat little pillow because I, I a fan made me one 
if you uh, try to sell uh, okay matt i'm listen, not if, selling if, i'm if, not if selling i'm not sell, selling that if you try to sell a mundane matt pillow you will never hear the end of it listen there was a dude that used to sell clocks with his face on it and i've heard jokes about that for eight years like you need uh, to yeah. stay the fuck away from that i know i'm pretty i'm pretty i'm pretty certain that if i were to do that uh, it would it would be it would be probably an act of pure desperation or I would yeah I know trust me I would not hear the end of that shit for a long goddamn time it would be worse than I think turn off that pesky ad blog it would well, be cool. and the, the realistic thing too is and I, I don't think a lot of uh, these people that want to do merchandising are really forward thinking at least in this regard um, a lot of the shit people use for that are that make up part of their icons and you know part of their brand if you want to call it that oh, it was copyrighted is, copyrighted assets that other people did or fan yep. drawings and the last thing you want to do is sell a hundred thousand shirts and then the guy that drew you the picture that you put on the shirt says hey we never had an agreement that you could do that and now you owe me money well actually yeah that's why the, the guy who did my logo uh i've actually talked to him and i've worked out an agreement with him so and again that's the, that's that's the thing and when i when i say that a lot of people who do this as a job they don't they don't ever look at the uh the, the business side of YouTube, you know, they never, they, or not just YouTube, but just the business of this type of world in general of what you need. You know, it's like, we argue fair use a lot in what we do, but if someone were still to come and like file a lawsuit against us, we would still have to come up with the money to defend ourselves, you know? And like, that's a big thing. We're already seeing that with like the Bible reloaded have having that happen to them. H3, H3 is having that happen to them. And it's just these, you know, this can happen. And so there are downsides to, to, to how we do things. Uh, well, if, what... if, if you're going to do it, get it. My, my suggestion to anybody listening is if you're going to do this, uh, get everything in writing. Otherwise, yeah. you are asking for legal liabilities yeah. later on down the road. Get it in writing. Get a fucking contract because yep. you don't want to see you don't want to be Mr. Popular with 500,000 subs that just moved a shit ton of merchandise. And then your ass gets dragged into to civil court because uh, you owe money because that is going to be a fucking nightmare. Well, even uh, even on on my stream right now, I have like the little lower banner with the Twitter and the Facebook and the Patreon. That little thing was actually sent to me by a fan. They drew that. They designed that. And then I asked them if I could have it. And they said yes. So I sent them a release form for that specific image. Because that's like if I'm like going to have it up, I might as well have a release form signed for it. This way, my ass is covered legally. Also, what always kind of makes me laugh, right? Um, a lot of people I notice go through Teespring to get to get their merchandise branded, to sell and shit. Why? Yeah. Why would you go through a middleman that's going to take such a huge cut? You could go to Alibaba or another Chinese site, get the same merchandise of the same quality made for literally three or four cents, and then fucking sell it yourself. So, like, I I, I don't think a lot of these guys that are doing merchandising with their brands really have any idea how to make or maximize their own profits. It's it's funny to me to watch them go through third parties to do it rather than just doing it directly because, oh, I'm scared of the, I'm scared of the foreigners. How, how am I going to work out a deal <laughs> with the fucking, the Chinese? What if they fuck me? Well, you, you know, they'll send you sample qualities. You can, you can work yeah. with them. I've been, uh, I've been looking into getting like the, the skull logo, uh, on like a patch, like an iron on patch just as an idea. So I've reached out to other companies to get some samples. I'm still waiting to hear back from a couple of them. You know, I mean, like, no, it's, it's all part of the branding. It's all part of the merchandising. And this is part of entertainment. I mean, you know, I mean, look, at like, I will fully admit, like, I'm wearing a Boba Fett fucking jersey. I'm a walking billboard for Star Wars right now. I'm okay with that because I like Star Wars. But and that's part of it. That's part of the game. It's, uh, I think it's all about, like, being smart about how you do it and then also not, uh, you know, not, um, I don't know, being a cunt really and, and not fucking around with other people's shit and then, you know, getting upset when you get caught. Because there's a lot of people out there that get caught doing really dumb shit on YouTube and then pull the, whoa? No, I'm yeah, th there have been a, yeah, I, I, like the, uh, what is it, the CSGO lottery scandal where yeah. the guy ran the site himself and made all the profit and faked the videos like a cunt and uh, robbed, I, robbed I, his I, subscribers of a shit ton of money because he's an asshole. Well, you have to, I mean, okay, I got to ask you, well, let me ask your opinion on that. Do you think Valve was, like, aware of everything? I think, um, you know, like, I don't think Valve is necessarily a bad company, but I think that Valve can have its head up its fucking ass a lot of the time, and I think maybe they might have looked the other way a little bit. Um, oh, um, dude, be, it was a two point three billion dollar a year industry. Right, and they so, they looked the way a lo the other way a lot. Right, and, and, and so I mean, you know, that kind of shit happens a lot, but. You know, kind of on the branding thing, I, it, don't you think it's going to set up a situation for these people that want to make YouTube a career, right? Let's say demonetization with ads happen and you have to go at it on your own. 
and let's say Patreon works and they're not going to throw you off. Like you're safe, you're good, you're fine. And you want to make up your revenue by doing branded merchandise, okay? Uh, aren't you robbing Peter to pay Paul? Like if I'm your fan and I'm going to give you $10 a month and I do it through Patreon, but then you're selling a t-shirt, well, okay, I'll buy the t-shirt, but now you're not going to get the Patreon money. Won't that just equal out to the same amount of money? Uh, yeah, but it's uh, but but the question is though, you won't get that Patreon money that month, but will you continue the Patreon money the next month? You know, it, it's it, it might be it might be a general offset in order to then continue having a sustained relationship with that person because you're not always going to be selling T-shirts or, or you're not always going to be selling other things, and so it kind of has that base. Plus, people will always find a way to justify spending for entertainment whether it's it's buying a movie or a video game or so on and so forth or even even supporting uh their their favorite creators you know there, there are always going to be you know questions that are brought up in terms of of how this stuff works but the great thing i think i mean like okay like look at someone like glenn beck and rush limbaugh like they've created these entire you know especially glenn beck has created these brands around them sure it's crashed and burned for beck but, uh, you know, in in his heyday, he, he was writing, what, a couple books a year, putting on all those shows uh, that were going to theaters and stuff. I mean, he was just selling you constantly and people were were, were buying it up and, and still a, a bunch of them support him with the blaze and other projects that he's working on. So if done right, you can sustain that part of, of your existence uh, and not burn out your fan if it's just diversified enough you may take a hit here and there but in the end it all kind of evens out yeah but i mean if you take somebody like a glenn back i mean he was propelled to fame basically through a free medium i mean people watch the television show they're not yeah. necessarily paying their cable bill to watch glenn back it's not really comparable to patreon support and with glenn back i mean he's getting blasted out to millions of people i mean I, I just think that there's a real risk um with again pitting your your hopes too much on youtube and i i think that people are going to kind of come to the reality of if ads disappear completely and this is the you know the career choice that they really really want to have that they're going to find out that you know the there are limits that their fans may love them quite a bit but you know maybe it's a t-shirt this month and no patreon or maybe it's patreon and no t-shirt and it's going to kind of find a steadying level where they're not able to really push it further back to where they were they were used to by getting these ads served up. And so, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't know that that's my take on it at least. Well, it's, it's, and I don't think there's going to be a perfect solution to the problem. There's always like it, let's say for example, the ads come back, things, you know, f magically fix themselves and everyone is, you know, going back to being fat, dumb and happy and not complaining about it. There's going to be uh, another event. Oh, you wait, know. um, wait, can I address one question? This guy, this guy brought this up. Do you mind? Yeah. Uh, Kenneroth, I think it is. You said uh, for some man or for some fans, it might be though. But I mean, that kind of goes back to what I was talking or Matt and I were talking about earlier. Like when we say the shit really hasn't hit the fan with competition for who can get the money to come to their Patreon. Um, let's say you've got a fan that that does support you, but he might support five other people. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah you may have somebody that's got super deep pockets, but that money's being distributed to 20 different people, so they're not going to have that extra disposable income. Like you're you're, you're whale hunting at that point. You're looking for that Japanese businessman that's going to buy you a Lamborghini because he thought your fucking Muppet video was funny. You know what I mean? Like it's it's really wishful thinking. I'm, so I'm sorry. I just wanted to. No, it's it. true. But I mean, I know a guy. I know a guy who he does streams every morning on Twitch. Gets at least three four hundred dollars a morning on his two hour live stream, and a lot of it is from one dude who lives in like Dubai and has like a lot of oil money. You know, and just likes him and wants to, and wants to support him and shit. So finding that whale is not entirely out of the question. But yeah, when everyone's out there trying to be Captain Fucking Ahab, the seas are going to get populated really quick. You know, and those those whales are gonna they're gonna, they're gonna go and hide. Uh, so that's gonna be a problem, and that that day will come. Um, I don't know when. You know, I'm I'm also waiting for it to impact uh, the social justice wars. I'm waiting for it to really kind of go after them because look how much money they make compared to how much money people like us make, you know, like those fuckers pay out. It has got to go away sometime. Well, yeah, but I mean, that has to do again with the cyclical nature of the internet. Things kind of ebb and flow and things get popular and diminish and come back. I think you're going to start to see kind of a rise of really, I don't, I don't even know what to, to call it, but I think H bomber guy is good at representation of it. He's making about 4,400 a month on Patreon right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's gotten really popular, and he's—you could call him an SJW. 
you know, he he lambasts um, Sargon and he he goes after uh, pickup artists and he does all of that kind of shit. But people like his content, and it's not like a Zoe Quinn or Brianna Wu approach to it. It's the same kind of message, but it's wrapped up in a different kind of humor, and I think that's what's propping them up right now. Maybe. I, I, well, I, I, it's I also. Know. I mean, look at the beginning beginning days of Gamergate. You know, Brianna Wu goes out there, does that, woe is me, couch feigning nonsense, throws up a Patreon and gets like four grand in a month. And it's been, it's gone down since, since then. But even Zoe Quinn has maintained this, this massive, you know, in earning off of that every single month. And it's, uh, you know, this has been three years now, almost, of this kind of stuff. I mean, shit, look at how much money Anita Sarkeesian makes. There, there's apparently a lot of money. I, there's a lot of benefactors out there. Right. There's there's a lot of people out there that are paying for this shit. And I, I, you know, and you'll hear the rumors like, oh, it's all George Soros funded. But there are people out there with with a lot of money to burn that are wanting to see this narrative move forward. And then there are people, you could say, on our side that are doing uh, the same thing. They'll put out some money, maybe not as much because they, they maybe they spread it around, but they still want those ideals discussed. And it just becomes this. Uh, the situation where you know it's going to boil down to who has the most money, <laughs> really. Yeah, you, you know, your your guy in chat sees the ganja. I think it is. Uh, he he's actually pretty fairly accurate. If you want to make a shit ton of money online, porn is the way to go. Like yeah. uh, it's great that like the biggest patreons are all either drawing related or porn related. Which like, is so you, funny because Patreon can... says no porn's allowed. Yeah, if you can draw porn, you are a rich motherfucker on the internet because regardless of your political ideology, everybody likes jacking off. So that is yeah. probably the most secure internet job you could get if you're good at drawing is to go for that. <laughs> it's or just become a cam whore. I mean, there was what well, there was one YouTuber, Clara Baby Legs, that was like doing gaming and then like that kind of dried up, so she jumped over to being a cam whore. Makes a lot more money doing that now. Yeah, sex sells, man. I mean, it, oh, it always has. It, it's, remember when uh, YouTube, everybody's bitching about clickbait uh, thumbnails because there were a bunch of big tit of chicks in every one of them? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a big thing. I used to like video responses. I mean, back in the day, you know, you have this back and forth between content creators or people that are putting up videos. Maybe they get into a fight. You've got to, like, jump from one channel to the other. But back in the day, you would have video responses that went above the comment and below the video. So you could... You could literally, I could tag onto your live stream right now a response to something you said, and everybody could click it and go watch it. But yeah. they got rid of it because cam whores took over and basically pinned their videos on every single video that ever went up, regardless of the content it was about. I remember that, yeah. I remember, I loved video responses. I, I, It's a solid tactic for trying to get your name out there in some respects, and I, I see why the cam whores were doing it. But yeah, when they when they got rid of that, I was so pissed off. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun to go back and forth on that kind of stuff. But at the same time, the 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 responsibility also falls on the creator because they still had to, you know, OK it. And so if the people were out there trying to, you know, not if the content creators were not caring what content was there and therefore adding to that problem, uh, then they're fucking assholes. But they, they still had to be the ones to say, yay, this video could be here. Okay, well, you know, I, I've been trying to get a lot of different people's opinions on this, so let, let me just ask you this, because I've sure. been asking everybody, what do you see playing out in the next three months as far as Google and YouTube is concerned in regards to everything from advertisement to what they allow as content? Do you see it as becoming more draconian? Do you th see it as just kind of diminishing and disappearing? What do you think is going to happen? Well, this is that's this this is this is the hard question because so August is usually when the you know the holiday ad season starts to pick up, right? It starts to get a little bit better in August. September does a little bit better. October, November, December is when you're hitting your really really solid ad revenue months. Those are the months that basically make you survive for like the first half of the next year, essentially. And if if this month it doesn't pick up, uh, you know, and in, in next month it doesn't pick up then yeah it's going to fuck over a lot of people because this is where you know they're going to this is this might be their their the people they know that people know the holiday season is where you're making money you know they know that and if if they take that away during you know the the golden time of the year that's going to run a lot of people off and that could be their tactic if they if they are trying to clean house if they are trying to go you know draconian on this 
uh, and make it a specific type of content that gets popular on this particular platform, then that's going to be the way to do it. You, you, you're going to have to suffocate them out during the best time of the year. And that's, that's basically at this point what I'm waiting for. You know, like I've got enough in savings or I can, you know, I'm covered, I'm good, uh, but it's starting to go down. It's starting to go down. And it's like what's going to be coming in the next couple months. If that doesn't pick up again, then it's like, you know, there's a lot of that reevaluation of like, okay, where is my time going? I've got a kid that I'm going to be having uh, in either November or early December, uh, you know, so I've got to prepare for that. I've got to make sure like, you know, I've got money to take care of her. Uh, you know, I've got to make sure that my, you know, I'm working so my girlfriend can take the three months off of work in order to raise our daughter. Like that is, that is at this point in time, the next great concern. And, you know, and I've, I've been a little bit vocal about this on Twitter. You know, you've messaged me too about it. And it's like, I don't like to bitch about it on Twitter, but there's those moments where you just feel like you, you're literally just kind of lost in that moment. You know, the weight of everything going on, all your decisions kind of come crashing down on you. Uh, and and it's it gets pretty it gets pretty intense but if if it starts to come back to where it's manageable for enough people uh then it's going to keep people around and a lot of it's going to boil down you know the old analogy of the dog on the nail uh no i'm not familiar with that one all right so the, that, that that old saying is you know there's a, a dog on a deck and it's always barking and, and whining and complaining because it's sitting on a nail and instead of getting off the nail uh, and moving on, the dog just sits there and keeps complaining because it's easier than actually getting up, you know, and that's kind of what I think might be more realistic as to what might happen, which is where they the ads kind of stabilize to what could be considered manageable for living, you know, maybe not what you were earning, but enough to where you're getting by. Uh, and so people will continue to do it because it's, you know, it's, it's easier than going out and getting another job. It's, it's, it's annoying, but it's manageable. And instead of, you know, you know, trying to better their content or try to get more patrons or so on and so forth, they will continue to just bitch about the amount of money that they're not earning, even though they're making enough to just kind of barely skate. And I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to be that person. I honestly really hate the fact that that we have to talk about this kind of shit. Um, and we don't have to talk about it, but it's again, this is just, just keep, okay, keep in mind. Remember, okay, when you did your video about Linkara, all right? Yep. And I left my ass off at the beginning of that because I knew that was going to be in there. I I had a feeling you were going to pull another, uh, an, another mini little kind of jab at me on that one um, because I did a video about about Linkara at the time. I don't know if you if you ever saw it, but it was like, it was called YouTube is a hobby, not a job. And, and I attacked Linkara for what he said in that video, you know, like YouTube, you know, I'm like, it, you can't live off ad revenue, that kind of shit. No, I just, and, I, I just thought it was a funny opening. Uh, it was a great me, opening. It was let, a great let, opening. Let, I, I love that little video. Let, uh, me, let me ask you this then. Let's say August numbers are good. Let's say ads come back. Right. Uh, and, and so that's good. You can, you can make your money off advertising yeah. again. Everybody relaxes a little bit, but let's say on top of that, you know, this limbo state thing doesn't go away. So has everybody got a gun held to their head as to what they can talk about? I mean, is that is that a profession that, that people are going to want to pursue where it's, it's well, geez, I'd, I'd really love to talk about this story, but I know if I do it, I'm going to be put in the timeout corner. Are they going uh, to use, are they gonna, are they gonna use the, the carrot and the stick? You know, behave yourself and we'll give you that juicy ad revenue, but just don't you dare say a certain word we don't like. It's possible. It is entirely possible. I have no idea until we're there. You know, but then I'd also don't want to be caught in a situation like, a, you know, like cooking a frog in, in, in boiling water, slowly turning up the heat till you don't know what's happening. Like, and that's I, I don't want to get to that point. I don't want to be so complacent with being restricted that we just kind of deal with it until we're in over our heads and we have no other choice, you know, but to comply. Uh, I don't feel like YouTube is going to try to go that particular route. I, I They understand the kind of content on this chan on, on this platform is not TV. And I know they're trying to push YouTube TV and that could be a factor. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I, I, I guarantee you that's a factor. YouTube wants, I mean, everybody knows television is on the decline. Nobody really watches television that much, except for a few specific shows here or there yeah. on a favorite network or maybe even a pay network. But the reality of it is their numbers are shit. And, you know, when you got a guy, some Swedish fucker that can scream at the top of his lungs while he, you know, runs away from mechanical teddy bears and he's getting four million views for that. And your Anderson Cooper can barely get, you know, half a million people to watch him sit there and spew his bullshit. 
the yeah. television you know companies uh, the, these corporations look and say what what the fuck are we doing wrong so i think that you know google sees this as an opportunity to try to make some weird merger of let's make it from youtube to you know maybe utv where we're going to bring in these companies i mean i've seen fucking ads where um it said would you i almost i think it was on youtube where it talked about, would you like to try like a, a, a promo, a beta of watching television through through our, pro, our platform? So it, I just don't know, man. I, I think things are fucked, and I think they're going to get worse. And I, that the whole reaction to the memo really spokes me. I, I, I think that it, it maybe will turn into a carrot and stick approach, and I think it's going to make a lot of the content that people make um, shit. And I think it's going to scare off a lot of people from talking about things they really want to talk about because they're concerned that it's going to hurt their bottom line. No, that's true. I mean, like, there are things I don't talk about because I know that I won't be able to monetize them. Uh, and, you know, but again, it boils down to being a business decision. You know, it's not the best thing on the planet. I mean, I hate the fact that CNN can, can you know, do wall-to-wall -wall Syria coverage showing the little boy in Aleppo that's, like, you know, covered in blood and grime and run ads on that shit. But if I talk about it, I don't get the same treatment. That is horseshit. And that's annoying as fuck. Now, there's always the talks about, like, you know, uh, is there going to be another platform that's going to come out? Are there, you know, like VidMe or whatever that's going to be able to do that? But even VidMe has started censoring the out there political content, you know? And, and so I, I don't have an answer. I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like, yes, the response to that memo uh, is, is definitely telling of, of the times. But I just don't know what to do. I don't know what the next steps to be. Like, you know, Sargon had said today, like, make sure you support your favorite creators by following them on, on social media and you, and you keep up with, with how them. Did, yeah, how did that work out for him? Yeah, I know. He was banned. <laughs> I'm like, he's like an hour later. Uh, so go figure on that one. It's, 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 yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, it's a battle. It's, it's a battle between different ideologies and until the left, like, I don't know. I mean, if, if Trump can continue triggering them to the point of of almost obsolescence then, then then maybe we have a chance you know maybe we have a chance for like the average rational person to come around and realize that it's not all sexist or racist or homophobic you know and that these people that are just crying about it are literally crying about it but i mean there is there is a lot of people out there are there are a lot of people out there that have watched like content from you and content from me and, and even, you know, and a lot of other people. And they realize that like the left is is acting, uh, you know, like a fucking fool. I mean, look at the Evergreen State College situation. You know, it blew up to the point of where like they're starting to lose their funding. You know, University of Missouri had the protests from 2015 and, and, and the way that the university bent over backwards for those protests have cost them like 20 million dollars. They've had to shut down three dorms and lay off a bunch of staff. So there are repercussions in the real world for these events being covered as they've been covered but yeah, I, you know, we're not getting any bit of the support to do it, which is the unfortunate thing. Oh uh, yeah. I just say again, the guy in your chat, uh, live leak doesn't censor. Yeah. But live leak fucking hates YouTubers. Like there's nothing worse than going on live leak and some fucking YouTuber is shitting it up. Uh, that's the, <laughs> that's the last place they'd like you about as much as world star hip hop would like you if you brought your shit over there. Uh, that's, that's not, I don't think the fucking solution. Yeah. I don't know. Live leak, uh, uh, lively. <laughs> I go there to watch like the seriously crazy gore, the gore stuff. Other than that, it's world star hip hop. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I've just been trying to get people's opinions. I am working on this video for this weekend and just, just looking back at the history of the shit that's been going on in tech is kind of crazy. Uh, it, it was worse than I really kind of realized, I guess. And it, it was worse than even when I was first considering doing the video and then looking at the memo and all these Google employees talking. And then I got people sending me shit from the end. It, it's just, it's just, I don't fucking know. I, I, I just feel like, you know, a, a situation is a brewing and I think people are going to get really fucking caught off guard. And, you know, people say like, oh, well, we, we'd fight back. You know, if the censor's here, we'll fight back. But if you can't put a video up on YouTube, if you can't tweet, if you can't put up a, a Facebook post, if you can't put up a Tumblr blog, wh where are you going to fight? Who are you going to, who's going to listen to you? Like you like to say, like people like to say, oh, it's just this normie shit that everybody uses. What does it matter? Well, it's the fucking normies that you've got to convince this shit is wrong. So yeah. if you if you can't get a message out to them and say, look at what's happening, you're fucked. The battle's over. And, you know, it just 
it, it feels like it's just getting more and more. I, I, you know, I use the word a lot, but draconian. It's just very, very fucking dystopian. I wanted my cyberpunk future to be better. I wanted fuck robots and rocket ships, not SJWs running fucking Google. I, I don't know what happened. I got robbed. Well, you, you could still get fuck robots. I mean, like they're coming, and apparently, you know, SJWs be damned. So yeah, well, the, the feminists are already trying to get them banned, you know, because they know that the second a guy can fuck a robot that doesn't talk back, that relationships are forever changed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, once those robots go worldwide, the entire population of Japan is fucked. So that's just going to happen. Uh, but, to, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be pushback against this kind of stuff. But the biggest problem uh, is it's, it's it's you know, this is a byproduct of the the helicopter parent of the everyone gets a participation trophy uh, nonsense. This is this is a byproduct of that, and these those kids have now grown up and they've moved into adulthood. And for some reason, the real world, which is usually there to kind of smack some sense into you, has been outright placating their wildest dreams. And it, it's it's not showing any kind of. Well, I mean, I'd say maybe some extent it's slowing down in some areas, but yeah, in in Silicon Valley and tech. Uh, it's going to be there for a while. And that has a lot to do with the San Francisco mindset. But keep in mind, too, that a lot of companies are moving out of uh, Silicon Valley. And thank, thank fucking God for that. Yeah, that yeah, as the mecca it. of tech is ridiculous. Yeah, they're moving out. They're moving out of those places and they're going, you know, I mean, the fuck, a lot of them are moving to Seattle. A lot of them are moving uh, to Portland. You know, I mean, yeah, these are left leaning cities. Clearly, Portland has some issues. Don't get me wrong. You should not be like that. I grew up in Portland. It used to not be what it is now. I'll tell you that. But but there are a lot of people out there that okay, keep in mind too that a lot of these, a lot of the, the executives of these companies they're moving to like rural areas. Okay, like it, like so for where, where I I just moved to Olympia, Washington, and there are my realtor was telling me that there are so many people executives from these big tech companies that are coming up to this city, which has got forty five thousand people. It's a small town, and it's an hour commute into. Uh, you know, into the city, but there's so many like conservative minded people out here, you know? Yeah. You have like your ever, your evergreen state college, which is only a few miles away from me. Uh, and they're crazy libs, but in the city, man, it's like people here, like they, they have Trump pen stickers everywhere. I've seen dudes fly the Confederate flag around here, you know? So they're getting exposed to these different uh, thoughts and these different opinions, but it's when they get into the epicenter of, of the business and that mindset continues to permeate that those people make all the noise, but the executives generally don't give a shit unless they're forced to. I think the Google memo forced their hand because of the, the fact that the guy released it on the company intranet, you know? Right, right. Uh, I, yeah, I, somebody mentioned something in the chat uh, about AI, and I love uncomfortable questions. Can I ask you an uncomfortable question? You want to add? Sure. Okay, awesome. Are you familiar with harmful opinions? Ah, oh, fuck me. Yeah, you walked right into this one. You know who Harmful Opinions I can, is, right? Look, okay, I just, I'm fully aware. I know what you want to talk about. I I cannot say anything legally for another 13 months. <laughs> oh, is that right? So I, I will fully admit that there was a two-year non-disparagement clause in my contract. I The company isn't even around anymore. I don't quite know where it stands on a legal sense. I'm also just not going would you, to, would like, you be Would you be willing to say Harmful Opinions is God? I'm not going to say harmful opinions is anything. Tim is a fucking idiot. Um, oh, I don't like, I'm sorry. He's, he has an interesting perspective on a few things, but his way of going about it was, I don't think the most accurate. I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's relevant to the conversation. I mean, we're talking about <clears throat> a large corporation fucking with an individual, right? I mean, like this guy well, who wrote yes, the memo, we, right? Who wrote the memo was now blacklisted. They're talking true, about blacklisting okay. him. Um, and, you know, who stands up for him or who speaks out to him? It, you know, and here you got little harmful opinions who's kind of saying the same thing about I won't name the company, certain certain company, uh, you know, allow me to speak candidly about this. Sure. Uh, yeah, we all we all want that kind of, you know, uh, open, anonymous discussion. Sure. So you have to wait <laughs> two years before you can really talk about this, huh? Well, I, not not two years. It's a two year non-disparagement clause. Um, it's just it's basically just like I can't like badmouth the company. Oh, let's uh, do this then. Today's opposite day. <laughs> So say all the good things you want to about this particular company because then it's not a disparagement. Well, I will say – I will tell you what I what I will say is when this situation went down um, and I, I saw 
what was being said and also what was being shown. I did go to the CEO of the company and because I was on board to uh, to do another video and probably do a couple more videos for them. They were really trying at that time to get a lot of people involved. Uh, and I told them I based on the controversy, based on what's going on, I will not be doing any more videos about that particular program. So I pulled myself out of the running for anything. Uh, and that did that did definitely cost me several thousand dollars. I don't regret that though, because looking at what was showcased, uh, there were definitely some causes for concern. Um, well, now, what, I, would one of those concerns be? And again, this is hypothetical. Let's let you know. In fact, let's say let's say there's privacy even... concerns. I would argue there are some privacy concerns. Well, no, let's let's put let's move into hypothetical because I'll keep your ass out of legal fire. Let's say that. <laughs> let's say. Um, uh, let's say there's a company called discreet.com. They're not very <laughs> candid about things. And so discreet.com is run by ex Google people. And they come out with this, this, you know, this, this program. And they, you know, there's some rumors circulating that they want to use an AI to kind of parse through what they consider acceptable or unacceptable content. And then it turns out that Google itself, the main company after discreet.com just stops doing what discreet.com does for whatever reason, uh, Google comes out and says, hey, yeah, we've been taking down a shit ton of videos, like they you know, recently have said, and 75% of it was done with this new AI we're using. That would seem kind of coincidental, wouldn't it, that an ex-Google employee would go make a new company, have all these people with radical opinions show up on their platform, maybe train an AI, shut down the company, and then go bring that AI back and sell it off to a company like, say, you know, Google, the people they used to work for. Would you say that Discrete.com may have done something like that? I would say that that's... Uh, not out of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. And also, I do believe that, if, if I recall correctly, that was also, I think, part of the original business plan of the company? Uh, of discreet.com? Discreet yeah, yeah. Of I, think it was also part, I think that was also part of their hypothetical business plan from when they were, you know, doing it. I will fully say that Discrete.com, uh, a, a lot of people who talk about Discrete.com, who who talked on their behalf, maybe, didn't do as much digging as they should have, in some respects, into to what the company offers. Uh, you know, I don't... Would you I, say, I, it, it, <laughs> let's say that Discrete.com, <clears throat> again, hypothetically, crazy idea, hires uh, what they like to call social media influencers. Okay. Uh, would you say that those social media influencers might have played an inadvertent part in fucking over everybody by training that AI, by getting people to use their discrete platform? I don't think their intention was to fuck uh, – hypothetically. I would Inadvertently, not Inadvertently. I don't believe that their intention was to – was inadvertently fuck people over. Uh, I, I believe that their intention was to uh, – was to create something that would be good for – I want to think hypothetically that that their intention was to try to find a way to stop something from, let's say, like Justine Sacco from happening again. Um, or they at least use that as a basis for their idea. Um, now, there's a lot of other hypothetical accusations against discreet.com that also came up that I don't know much about uh, on any on anything. I, I basically tuned out after that first week for a lot of it. Well, all I can say is I love discreet.com and I'm not telling you that because their CEO is in my house with a gun. Okay. <laughs> discreet.com is amazing. And their CEO is in no way threatening my life right now. As I tell you this. Sure. 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 Yeah. Their CEO, man. Yeah. She, uh, uh, she, she, yeah. The, the, the could be a Z. We have no idea. Hypothetical company could be a trans person. Could be a, a turtle kin. Could We're be a turtle. <laughs> could, could be a turtle kin. But, um, yeah, I mean, I do see parallels like that, and I, you yeah. know, this is my personal opinion. I think har uh, harmful opinions got fucked over pretty hard, and I, I, I think, think you, well, okay, I, like I think, just as well, I, I think he, I get why you think that, and I, I'm not in I disagreeing with you, but like he hit that with like some serious levels of of just like, cons like tinfoil hat, you know, like he started like he started treating everyone. You know, he never gave anyone the benefit of the doubt, which is my biggest complaint against him, 
was like he never sat there and said like did you know anything about this it was this attack video attack video and and so he then continued to push it well yeah but i mean matt imagine yourself in a situation <clears throat> we'll use another hypothetical a hypothetical <laughs> we'll not talk about discrete or or you know any of its parallels let's just uh what what fancy little how about we call it fucking bullshit dot com okay. let's say fucking bullshit dot com for whatever reason decides they want to fuck with you and they want to fuck with your family and you look around at all the people that are you know content creators kind of in a similar vein and they they fucking love fucking bullshit.com. They're doing promo videos for fucking bullshit.com. And you're thinking that's that's really weird. So you make more videos talking about, well, that's weird. Why are they doing it? And then they make videos uh, not only defending fucking bullshit.com, but maybe even kind of attacking you. Wouldn't that make you kind of paranoid, man? I yeah, there was a couple of yeah, okay. No, no, no. I I I get that. I completely understand and I am sympathetic. Um uh I could I say that my response to the initial outrage on fucking bullshit.com uh, hypothetically has been, it was, was in response to how I felt I was framed. Uh, but people have taken that and they have determined in their weird hypothetical deluded mind that I was paid $10,000 to make that hypothetical video. No, and that that, that just... would have gone to the uh, to the incredible theist. Let's say hypothetically, <laughs> would have been <laughs> well, the one making argue about more, 10, I argue more. It would be it would be the, uh, uh, the 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 tailored skeptic would would be a person that would probably be more in. There, well, there you go. Yeah, I, in that particular uh, category, these two uh, as a hypothetical channel yeah. personality online. Uh, yeah, there were people hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> that went with that a little bit too, uh, I, I think a little bit too far. I, I saw it for what it was hypothetically, and I, I removed myself from the equation um, uh, just just because I didn't feel that it was worth it. You know, uh, I do agree that there was probably um, it could have been handled a lot better hypothetically, right? Uh, fucking bullshit.com could have handled it a lot better. Uh, those influencers talking about fucking bullshit.com could have handled it a lot better. And the person, you know, floating brain could have probably, I, I think, maybe started it off a little bit better. You know, and, I mean, and I, we, at the end of the day, would... it, it, it might be a little bit funny. I mean, it's kind of like hoisted by your own petard, right? I mean, if if these social media influencers help to create an eye that's going to censor them and then they get censored themselves by getting paid to do this, they kind of fuck themselves, right? I mean, they no, write I, I, I'm not disagreeing with sword. you. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you at all. It's uh, let's just let's let's chalk that entire hypothetical experience up to lessons learned. Lessons you know? learned. Very good. Always read the fucking contract and know. Oh you're yeah. Oh, no, well, no. I will say this though. So the second one I did, I did a, a the game. The I did a game sponsored video earlier this year, and they actually, they actually sent me like a contract. It was a it was a, a a disclosure contract, a disclosure agreement. Like they had outlined rules for what needed to be in there. I had to sign it. I had to agree to it. I had to send it back to them. They had to review the video, review the text, review everything, and they they made sure that everything was legally on the up and up, uh, which I which I will say I completely liked because I felt that that was a very professional approach to it. It wasn't trying to uh, screw anyone over. It wasn't you know they're trying to do it the right thing. Fucking bullshit. dot com maybe you know got a little bit ahead of itself in how it handled certain things, and I think I think at the time you know when you had the the theoretical theist uh you know making videos about it it it, because of how large of a channel he hypothetically is uh people might have just taken what he did and and run with it at face value thinking oh well if he did it then he must have already done the research so again lessons learned of what not to do Hypothetically well, for the future. right. I mean, I mean, it, and it's also funny, you know, uh, how, what what parallel name could I come up with? Uh, let's call them the incredulous bunch. Uh, <laughs> to what they might be that the incredulous bunch wasn't really fucking incredulous when it came to who they were doing business with is a bit uh, ironic, I guess. Yeah, I would I would I would agree with you there, actually. I would I would wholeheartedly agree with you there. Uh, there there were some some, you know, those those incredulous people. They weren't so incredulous. 
and some well, of the stuff well, that, they, well, that they responded with. Well, thank you for at least playing along with my hypotheticals, Matt. Most, you know, I, I give you credit. Most people wouldn't. You sure you don't want to tell me that harmful opinions isn't God, though? I mean, you uh, just throw it out no, there. No, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm I'm okay on that one. Uh, you know, <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> It's you know like I said, dude, like like life lessons. You know, this is there there are, there are ups, there are downs. You make mistakes. You, uh, the best course of action is to learn from them, uh, and then to not do them again. You know, and that was a big clusterfuck uh, in its entirety, and it's one that I I don't look back on fondly. I I, I you know I I think about video that I did in response to harmful opinions, and I think I could have handled that better, and I should have handled that better, but I felt. Like, it was a personal attack, and I just responded emotionally instead of logically, and that was my fault. And then when I realized that, I realized where things were going. I just, I backed away. I just, I said, fuck it, I'm done. You know? And and I really wish others would have done the same. Yeah, the, the situation as a whole, uh, this is just for me as an outsider kind of watching it play itself out. And I wasn't even really focused on any of the stuff that you did. There's more two other particular individuals, let's say. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Um... I, I just I, I felt bad for what was happening to the guy. I think he got dealt with unfairly. I don't like the idea of a corporation fucking with an individual to that extent. And you know, I guess it makes me wary of you know if we're looking at some kind of uh, a little tiff opening up here with YouTube. Yeah, you know, how the fuck are we going to trust certain individuals? Not not saying you, but like say certain individuals that aren't going to tell us. Oh, don't worry, man. YouTube's or YouTube, Google's on our side. They're all good and shit. When they pulled this crap with another company that was fucking with a guy. No, I understand completely. I do. I understand completely. Uh, and I don't think there's a way you can really do it. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, there's I, I, everything's got to be handled with a lot more caution and a lot more. Uh, researching and then a lot more, you know, maybe just doing the legwork. And I think, you know, and I'm not going to say that I'm, I've, I've never been like, you know, lazy on here. I've been lazy uh, multiple times. And I think that that can get us into more trouble uh, than not. And as a result of that, you know, we need to not do it. Um, but, uh, you know, this is an odd, you know how it is, dude. People, they come to you like they they always like oh Jim 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 talk to me you know I you know they 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 the, the people get very they're really good at boosting your ego right and so you could say that some people in that in, a theoretical and in, incredulous you know group there uh, might have had moments in time where their ego was entirely fluffed to the point of where are you saying they, they got a, they got high off the smell of their own farts a little too much yeah yeah and I would say that you know I would say that like there was like you know there's i think there was a group on on that platform that was dedicated to like a certain couple's relationship okay i guess i think so i might know what you're talking for, about for fans of that relationship to like come on in and everything and it's just like yeah yeah you know you could yeah you could sit there and say like there might have been a little bit of ego involved in some of this all right, man. Um, you, you you've been extremely fair with me on this so i, I you know i i can uh, take as good as i give uh is is there anything uncomfortable you'd like to ask me? Any question you've had that you wanted to ask and just oh, roast, roast my ass a little on? I'll, I'll totally let you go for it. I, you know, you know what? Like I said before, man, it's kind of like I'm trying to think. If there's anything in particular? Like I don't really. Uh, I will say okay. So like the I will say this though. In the beginning, the the the, the pesky ad block memes they got under my skin a little bit because they were fucking nonstop. So fuck you for that, but also fuck Andrew for that. But then yeah, Andrew, time... Andrew, Andrew fucking loved that. He, I know he's he the does. one that I... did the uh, the Saint Pepsi soundbite with a little rocket ship. I know, I yeah. know, we did. I get the feeling. I get the feeling that like Andrew like really doesn't like me. I have nothing against him, but um, yeah, no, I, it's... I would say it's fair that Andrew is not a fan. I, I guess. Uh... Yeah, I'd say that's. I'd say that's fair, and that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, you know, it's, it's no, I mean, like, look, you've given me shit over stuff. Uh, I think we've maybe disagreed, you know, I think, I, I, I think when like, okay, when, when Gamergate happened, like when you exited out of that, you know, it kind of came across like, did you think that there were just too many people that were in it for money? Cause that's kind of what like it came across. Like, uh, to me personally, it felt like you were just kind of like a attacking those of us who were trying to like 
make it our living or whatever, or just we're, we're just too many opportunistic people. Is that oh, what forced you out? Yeah, yeah, I'll explain it to you. So I left the Vokaroos up um, when I left because I just left. And so, uh, yeah, I'll explain the whole thing to you. Um, I did think there were a lot of opportunists that were using it to make money. Um, that wasn't a jab at you in particular. There were people that were already monetizing and making money before Gamergate happened. So I, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like, that had no effect on me. Whether if you, you had videos up for like three fucking years before, you know, like two or three years before that, and you were doing ads. So it, I, that had no effect on me. But there were, per, there were people. Uh, what was it? One uh, um, like example uh, is it Steve Tom Sawyer? Wanted like, oh, yeah, I fuck, fucking hate yeah, that guy. Yeah, he, he wanted fucking rent money. People wanted you to do GoFundMes. People want, and it was all thrown in the hashtag, and it became this big money whoring thing. And I think it just pissed me off because, you know, I legitimately fucking hated the gaming press, and I legitimately hated the shit they had been pulling for years and years and years. And so this thing started, and I got, you know, probably way too involved in it. And it just irritated me to see this, you know, like people start to kind of filter in that weren't there because they really agreed with that, but were there because they wanted to try to capitalize off of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've also heard a lot of things like, oh, but Jim, oh, you know, weren't you upset that you finger banged uh, Jane <laughs> on the live stream and that, that made you, you know, run away in anger? Dude, I made a chick come in front of 5,000 people. I don't think that's really something to be ashamed of. I should yeah, like hang I, that I actually, even as then, a plaque on my wall as an accomplishment. <laughs> that particular, but the, the the king of pole fallout from that stream, that's uh, that that was interesting. I I thought that was funny as shit, man. Because like he he was going like I I can't even remember half of it. It's like space Nazis and shit. It was just the weirdest fucking stuff. Oh, he, um, he yeah, he went. Uh, he, he he literally made a claim not too long after that that I was plotting to kill him <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, paul paul gets so worked up over shit you know he gets yeah he does and i'm sitting there going like i live in california you're in florida i don't give a shit about you like period yeah you know there, there and there was a lot of fighting going on at the time and the other thing that really pissed me off too and it had been brewing for about a month was people were starting to like step in and uh, like that tone policing shit like oh don't say this we need to be more friendly we need to be more moderate you know, I got a lot of shit for saying attack, attack, attack in my little vocal that I left on poll, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, I'd like to say in response to that, go listen to the advice that Trump's father gave him. Literally quoted verbatim, attack, attack, attack. Even Roger Stone says that, and that asshole's in the White House. So <laughs> the strategy works to an extent. Um, you know, could I have handled it better? Probably. But, you know, again, I was really invested in it, and yeah. I just – it just it was a culmination of a bunch of shit. And, you know, my exit probably wasn't the best. Uh, you know, I, I also heard a lot of people say, as long as this is being brought up, um, oh, you're trying to leader fag, right? I did maybe like six streams, and I, I don't know if you watched them or if you remember no, them. I did. <clears throat> but I said repeatedly throughout all of them, like, if you're good at something, go do it. Don't wait for somebody to tell you to do it. Like, yeah. if you want to go, you know, uh, target their advertisers, do that. If you want to go make videos, do that. Do whatever you're good at. Don't look at somebody as a leader. That's the worst thing you can do in this situation. The Volkeroos, I think, were misinterpreted as me saying, you'd better do this or else. I left them I, up. I didn't look at it like that personally. I, I get what you were saying. I think because also, like, just given, like, how my involvement in Gamergate started and then, like, you know, all that shit, how that went down. Like, I get what you were saying. But just from, like, a, I guess you could say from, like, a fan's perspective at the time, uh, I think people were really looking to you. You know, they were they were looking to you. Like, you know, some people might have bitched about leader fagging and fuck them. But, like, people were looking to you, like, not, I think, to lead, but to just kind of, like, be this voice of, of, of reason, like, that their frustration over everything that's gone on. Here's, you know, here's Jim. Here's Internet Aristocrat. He's made these videos. He gets it, you know. And people really wanted that. And, I, and okay, like, I do have to kind of ask this question because this is something I've been curious about. And I'm not roasting you over it. I'm just legitimately <laughs> Go curious. Ahead. Go ahead. Were you at the time at all trying to make King of Pole kind of like take over for you in that regard? That's because, the craziest shit I've ever heard. Why? Why? <laughs> okay, here's my thought process on this. Just no. hear me out on this one. Okay, right? go ahead. Okay, and it's 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 more like um, okay. So at the time when King of Pole was doing all those streams, you know, his first stream he brought in like five thousand people. We all were on there, including Adam Baldwin. Right. Like that big one. And then he started doing these streams all the time and getting like, you know, three, four thousand viewers and bring in lots of people. And then you started popping up on a lot of those streams with him. 
uh, as kind of just like, you know, just always kind of, hey, popping in, talking for a little bit, popping out. But then you would bring more people with you uh, every time you'd come on in. And then my theory at the time, it was just a working theory, but it seemed to make sense to me was like, you kind of, to me, it felt like you didn't want to leader fag. You didn't want to be that person in charge. But King of Pole was, you know, very much that megaphone, very much. I, I would even go as far as to call him a lightning rod. He, he has that personality. He brought in people. And then my, the, what I was working with was it, it felt like you were kind of like just driving everyone to him. So then you didn't have to be in the spotlight as much. That's no, kind of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. My, my main thing and the thing I said from the beginning, I, I, I thought it, it, it just, I guess it comes down to it works better if it's an amorphous mob, right? Yeah. If there's not like a specific target that can be toppled, it, it's just better that way. Um, I didn't want to be in charge. I, I didn't want anybody else really to be in charge. I thought it worked better when everybody was doing what they were good at. Um, it wasn't my intention to try to spotlight somebody. I mean, I did a lot of streams where I'd have people come on and talk about it. Um, like I, I'd have Milo on a stream or I'd bring Eric Kane on uh, for like one stream. Uh, I think Total Biscuit showed up in one of them for some reason. Yeah, uh, yeah I had you. I think Yeah, you were in one, weren't you? Uh, I'm sure I, think I, was in, I think it was in like one, yeah. Cause, uh, I, I, the the finger banging one, I know I popped up for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, uh, gaming, uh, uh, low ping, is it? I think, uh, yeah. The short fat otaku. Like, I, I tried when I would do these streams, and people were like, if you'd look at the chat, they're like, hey, bring so and so on. So I'd, I'd try to get a hold of them and bring them on to have them talk. Um, no, it wasn't my intention to try to shift or get somebody else to be like the leader, because again, I was against the, the notion of a leader. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody worked better kind of with a uh, almost a common goal but doing their own thing to achieve that goal because it's like you're hitting the thing from so many different directions they don't know what the fuck to do yeah. like the, the gaming press they didn't know i mean they really didn't know how to handle it they really they, there was something they weren't ever accustomed to dealing with and it was funny you know here here it starts with the you know people from fucking uh, 4chan and then you get reddit and then you got youtubers and then you've got like TV stars and musicians and fucking people who are journalists at different outlets and like they're they they don't know where the artillery is getting fired from anymore and they're yeah. they're running and they're bobbing and they're weaving and that chaos is what gave the the advantage because they didn't ever really have a chance to do a solidified defense and then when they tried to put up like a united front it made it really apparent how corrupt they were because those gamers are dead articles was pretty much the nail in the coffin. And then when the Game Journal's Pro thing came out, it, it confirmed it for everybody. All these assholes talk to each other. They all come up with a collective narrative. They do have a reason for doing what they do. They are trying to push forward an agenda. Um, but yeah, a lot of that, you know, my initial interest in the whole thing was I, I was one of the people who would browse V, you know what I mean? And it was like every fucking month there'd be some article and they'd be like, holy shit, did you see what Kotaku wrote? Holy shit, did you see what paper, Rock Paper Shotgun wrote? Yeah. It was the same thing. Oh, we're all terrible people. Gamers are so bad. You're all so sexist and you're all so shit. And like, man, it's a fucking hobby and we like it and we like playing our stupid little video games. Can you just can you just fuck off and leave us alone? Exactly. And it, it, you know what I mean? And I, I, I don't regret Gamergate. I think it I think it had a positive effect. Uh, you know, it might not have accomplished all the goals that it wanted to, but it did accomplish something, a little bit of something. Look at comic books. I mean, they're fucked seven ways from Sunday. Oh yeah, they, they, oh, they never yeah. had they never had their movement to fight back, and they they're just getting fucking reamed up the ass right now because of it. Well, they're getting reamed up the ass for that, and also um, Marvel just doesn't know how to fucking run comics anymore. That's just they keep they keep killing off everything because they know with number ones they make more money. Like that's their entire strategy. If it gets to like com like issue number five and it's not getting a foothold, they'll kill it. And then they'll just put a new one in its place in order to have another number one because those sell pretty well. So it's a really shitty tactic that's pretty apparent at this point. But yeah, they're they're you know putting in all these like you know pro SJW pro progressive leftist content that's uh, that's pissing off the fans, which is why they're not fucking selling. Yeah, it, and you know kind of uh, I just thought it's Gamergate was a weird. I mean, it, we're three years on from it. Isn't that fucking yeah. crazy to think about, man? It just went by like fucking that. Um, I'm glad that Thiel and Hogan uh, basically gangbanged Gawker into the gutter. I mean, Gawker deserved to get thrown into the fucking gutter. It, did. it really um, did. Even though Telemundo bought them up, but still, it you know, it, it still was good to see that happen. The Hulkster to come out and fuck him into the dirt was pretty, pretty fucking spectacular finish to it, really. I think. But um, yeah, yeah, Co I, I think comics are kind of. I, I think if you were to look at the video gaming industry and the comic book industry, uh, it, it's the tale of the what ifs. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. Gamergate happened and we saw the result of that. And then the comic book industry didn't have that version of it. And that's the, the cautionary tale of what if you don't say stop? Oh, no. And they're, they're getting they're getting reamed left and right right now. But uh, real quick on Gamergate, uh, I, I saw uh, I saw Zoe Quinn in person last year at Penny Arcade Expo. Did you I really? Right, I walked right past her and I was going to say something because it was on the street. And I was I, I was with my girlfriend at the time. We were walking down to the convention center and uh, I didn't say anything because I, I, I keep my girlfriend out of a lot of the shit, you know, like she's not involved in any of this stuff. Uh, and so I just didn't say anything. But I, all I wanted to do was just stop, go over and put my hand down and go, hey, Zoe, great to meet you. I just want to say thanks for giving me a career. <laughs> <laughs> So if I am, and I'm going back to PAX in a few weeks. And so if she shows up, I'm definitely going to pull that one out of my ass this time. But yeah, you know. the, the crazy amount of shit that I mean, too. And then you had the shit uh, kind of, I'd say, like the second month of Gamergate, I think it was with um, Mood going to South by Southwest. Yeah. And then, and then finding out his girlfriend was a Google employee. You know, that's fucking interesting now that I think about it. <clears throat> you know, Moot basically shut all that shit down and he's dating a Google employee. And God, how, you know, fuck, I got to look at that for that video now that I think about it. Because that, that had a fucking effect on the way Gamergate played out. It did. It really did. Because that's what moved it over the migration over to 8chan. Um, and then, uh, and then of course, 8chan selling off to the guy who, what, created 2chan? Who's now running 4chan? Oh, yeah. Little uh, Hiroshima Nagasaki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's- I saw your video on that too, and you, the 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 hypothesis you put together for everything, I thought was very fascinating. And uh, you know, it's like holy shit. Yeah, the I took that, are I, fucked. I took that from their. Um, I can't remember what board it is on HN, like their new board or something like that. There was this huge conspiracy theory about what was going on, and I fucking read that like back and forth, and I was like, God, that's fucking great. So I made a <laughs> video on it, uh, and I think it pissed off Hot Wheels pretty good. Um, but then, I mean, shit, look where we are a couple years later. We find out HN gets hacked, and they were, you know, they got hacked because they had some kind of a fucking software program that was storing IPs with post information. Yeah. So, you know, fuck. You can, you know, where can you post to be safe? I don't even know how good, you know, uh, Hiroshima Nagasaki is. <laughs> but uh, so far, he seemingly has been pretty, I, I'd say pretty fair. He's been pretty hands-off. He hasn't really fucked with anything too much. No, I, it, it still looks about the same to me. Um, you know, B still sucks. Pole is still crazy, but it's fun. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's that migration. You, you kind of migrate through boards. I mean, I started on B, and then I ended up on V, and then I moved over to Pole. Uh, the only consistent boards really outside of those are like K and Fit and shit. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's been a, it's been a good talk. It's kind of getting late, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah, I should probably here. wrap this up too. I gotta I gotta head to bed here pretty soon. But you know what, Jim? Just seriously, thank you for coming on and BS with me for a while. It's uh, a lot of fun, dude. You're. Like you are one of my favorite creators, even you know if you like to give me shit, uh, I do love the Matt. Work you Matt, out. Matt, I, I have a girlfriend. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey! I'm not trying to suck your dick. Okay. Okay. Just you're, so you're, clear. I'm, a just, I'm not like I'm just saying. I'm just telling you. I appreciate your work. Calm your ego. Okay. You're I'm gonna go. Much. I'm gonna go smell my own farts now and then get a job at fuckingbullshit.com. You <laughs> fucked me up too much now, Matt. That's what happens when you do that. Well, there we go. But no, no. But seriously, dude, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. We'll have to. Definitely do this again sometime. I think it was a very fun, and uh, I usually only stream for like an hour and a half, so we're pushing two two hours and forty minutes. So yeah, it's it's been going for a while. All right, well you take it easy, man. You too, man. I'll talk to you later, and uh, have a good one. Yep, you too. Well, all right, guys. That's thank you very much to Mr. Medicare for coming on in. That was a good conversation. I think we covered lots of ground uh, and uh, and everything. Also, uh, <laughs> man, it's fucking warm. I know I'm red. I will fully admit that I'm red right now. Everyone's like, "You're red," and it's, yeah, God, it's it's hot as shit in here, man. Uh, so I do want to go and look at uh, some of the super chats that we got. I got a whole bunch from Unknown Archive. Uh, you know, uh, so thank you very much, Unknown Archive. Uh, Drake Dean said uh gave 420 to help out with this trying times thank you very much i need to go pull out my pot cookies and and and, and go on those unknown archive unknown archive did say here again mr medicare is my favorite armored skeptic clone that was a good one uh abyss walker says uh hey jim and matt uh sick monday medicare stream uh that was yeah that's that's good man it's really good uh uh Kernoth says someone sent matt some old spice because he's sweating it's fucking warm dude it's just it's warm as shit. I'm turning my fucking fan on again. Um, and Evan Cocker says Jim is a new Howard Stern. I would agree. I totally agree. I think he's he's a great talent. 
Uh, Sergeant Buck says, Matt, that's verbal rape, and I'm sure he's referring to when I talked about Zoe Quinn. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, this is good, man. This is good. Uh, sorry I didn't get to the to the videos for tomorrow, um, but those will be up tomorrow, probably around the mid to late afternoon, whenever I wake up and get around to recording them. So, and I already, you know, got good shit. But then again, you know, everything's happening so fast these days. Who fucking knows, you know, what's going to be timely and everything else. But uh, to everyone else, uh, thank you very much, Woke Centrics, uh, Centrist, for the $2. Appreciate the super chat. Uh, but I'm going to go fuck off. I've been sitting here for two and a half hours. I've got to take a piss. I will talk to you guys. I'll be back on tomorrow night at 10 p.m. And then also the patron-only live stream Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, if, oh, real quick, if you guys want, if you guys are interested, uh, let me pull it out here. The Discord, I will pop the Discord in here if you guys want to come bs for a while i'll probably be in the chat hanging out for a little bit while i get shit situated for tomorrow and all right peace out guys